This is a HeadGum Podcast. Winning season returns at my bookie. You know, you might be in the Northern Hemisphere and it's summer turning into fall. You might be in the Southern Hemisphere and it's winter right now, about to turn into spring. Wherever you are on this pale blue dot on which we live, It's winning season, and winning season means doubling your first deposit. Take that initial deposit and multiply it by two. Winning season means insane props, epic bonuses, and the craziest cross-sport wagers. Imagine betting on baseball and basketball at once. My head is spinning. At my bookie, winning season means watching live sports and betting live sports all season long. Rejoice! The NFL has returned. That means action-packed Sundays and huge cash prizes. My Sundays are already action-packed, worshiping Almighty God, going to church. Any any huge cash prizes I got, going right in the donation bin. Get in on the action. Use promo code DOUGHBOYS and double your first deposit. New players get up to $1,000 in free play, designed to add more excitement to the sports you love and the games you bet. Bet with the best this NFL season. Your chance to win big. Use promo code DOUGHBOYS and double your first deposit. Your winning season begins today only. At my bookie. As the 1917 U.S. entry into World War I whipped citizens into a nationalistic furor, Americans rebranded sauerkraut as Liberty Cabbage, an attempt to mute the culinary influence of the now-hated Germans. This distinctly American act of combining performative jingoism with the absolute least amount of effort would repeat in the early aughts, as France's opposition to the Iraq War led the U.S.'s loudest, wrongest citizens to rebrand French fries as Freedom Fries. But despite these temporary attempts at Euro erasure, the continent's influence on American cuisine is indelible, and vice versa, with French fries among the most notable examples. In the 16th century, Spanish explorers returned from the Americas with a new ingredient, the potato, at first relegated as hog feed by Europeans, but in time recognized as a versatile kitchen staple. French fries were among the new dishes that would come to exist as a result of the transcontinental tuber track, though their disputed origin is credited by different sources to France, Belgium, or Spain. Brought back to the States in the 1700s, French fries exploded in popularity stateside in the 20th century alongside their common accompaniment, the hamburger, and soon, home cooks would desire a way to approximate the dish in their kitchens without the messy splatters of deep fat frying. In 1952, the Briggs Brothers, formerly corn growers, opened a company offering frozen French fried potatoes intended for oven reheating, with facilities straddling the border between Oregon and Idaho, giving their company its name from abbreviating both states. Today, 60 years later, the Briggs Brothers' brainchild is the dominant frozen fries brand in the U.S., and the company also credits itself with the creation of a variant beloved in cafeterias and gastropubs alike, the tater tot. Only time will tell which future war of opportunity will lead to a regionally specific foodstuff getting a clumsy rename. But whatever you call them, French fries are now as American as apple pie, which itself is European in origin. This week on Doughboys, our month of frozen food reviews, Doughboys Topical Freeze continues as we review frozen potato brand, or Ida. Welcome to Doughboys, the podcast about chain restaurants. I'm Nick Weiger, alongside my co-host, the star of Olive Garden State Snack Braff, the Spoon Man, Mike Mitchell. Wow. <sighs> you know, I, we, we just read the other day that Zach Braff, during the film, filming of Punk, beat up a 12-year-old or something, right? Yeah, just beat the shit out of a fucking adolescent, a preteen. Just fucking clocked him. I guess what what the what happened, apparently, that roast was courtesy of Blake Boyko, roast Spoonman at gmail.com. If you have an insult, you like the news image that up the show. They, they had set up a prank his... His friend on Scrubs, uh, Donald Faison, right? Is that the actor? They're like mm-hmm. they're like best friends on the show and IRL. Um, and so he'd set up a prank where his car was getting spray painted, and then Braff was so incensed by the prank, he didn't realize. Obviously, didn't realize it was uh, fake for the show. That he he chased down one of the kids and grabbed them and just like fucking pummeled him, which is very very very. You know, I don't. I don't just even curb stomped a tween because he was mad about his up. new car being. Yeah, and then, but then he tells it like as a funny story. He tells us like oh, this is a crazy thing that happened. I honestly don't even think it's that bad. <laughs> <laughs> 
I that's mean, like come an, on. That's an, that's an ordinary afternoon in Quincy. <laughs> chasing chasing down 12 year olds with 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 wu-tang and just beating the shit out of them we're chasing down bad 12 year olds well it's there quincy they're all bad 12 year olds <laughs> <laughs> that is also true um nick the doughboys came in in to our guest yes um and i don't i don't want to waste our guest time it's a good guest today um <laughs> We a lot of the times, Nick, you you look you look at the feed, and you're like, "Oof, look at this guest for Doughboys today." I'm gonna pass on this one, but today is one where you actually turn on the podcast and you listen to it. It's I don't good think guest. that's I don't think that's the internal narrative of a lot of our listeners. <laughs> as a, as a, as a, as an avid listener of this show, <laughs> I, I'm looking. I, I'm, frankly, I'm always looking for my own name as the guest. Uh, <laughs> always. <laughs> Always excited when my name pops up. But uh, you guys have been on a roll. You had the blank Checkies boys there uh, last week. Loved it. Uh, the, some really good ones. I actually, I want to talk about that for, for a second. Um, and Nick, do, do no you want to play a drop? Do you want to play a drop? I, I do want to do that too. I, look, there's a lot of things that have to be said. <laughs> and I also want to say, there's no offense. <laughs> it's, no, it's no offense to our guests because we're worse than any of our, than our worst guests. Right. But that being said, there's some stinker guests. Um, All right, Nick, stop saying that. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of uh, Griffin Newman, there was a little thing. The Doughboys can't be bought. Yes. But he texted us and he said, check this out. Look at how cool this is. Tombstone Pizza slid into his DMs <laughs> and offered him a bunch of Tombstone Pizza. And now look. The Doughboys can't be bought, but I'm offended that they didn't come to me. Wow. <laughs> well, because it's after the fact, it would make sense. You can't be bought prior yeah. to, but now That's it's true. just thank you. Now it's some nice thank you pizzas. And Nick, because of that, I'm lowering their score from four forks to 3.75 forks. <laughs> That's canonical. This is bold. <laughs> yeah, this is wild. They've been booting for the Frozen me, Plate Club. So, you're booting them out of the Frozen Plate Club. Something tells me if you get the same offer, they're right back in. <laughs> <laughs> this is extortion. <laughs> There's a possibility that if they if they message me and say that uh, they, that they're sending me free pies, that they're back in the Golden Plate Club, the first member ever. But right now, canonically, they're out. Weiger, they're out of the Frozen Plate Club. Doesn't this go against the quiz show rules? Uh, like somehow you are looking for financial gain or maybe do you think Tombstone at any point, Mitch, was like, we want to offer the pizzas to Mitch, but we don't want to be the reason this guy dies in his house. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast was built on the quiz show rules. We, <laughs> that's what we base this entire show on, right, Nick? I'm just th Now I'm just picturing how sweaty we would get in front of like a Senate hearing for violation of the quiz show rules. <laughs> just the most drenched any, anyone had ever been uh, as, a, as a witness. I would believe that this administration would make that their number one priority right now is enforcing <laughs> the quiz show rules on Doughboys for getting free tombstone pizzas after whining about it <laughs> on a podcast. I'll just say I would flip on Mitch in a heartbeat. I'm frankly looking... <laughs> Been looking for an excuse for years, so no shit, I would, you would. I have no problem turning states. I, I would, I would help you out. I'd spring you loose. I'd, I'd pull a Flynn on you, Weiger. Once you got, once you, once you got, a, once you were tossed away. That's the strategy you should be angling for a pardon, because that seems to work. I mean, you'd have to turn our hard right, which would not be great for your acting career, but I think in terms of avoiding prison. What's wrong with that? Do a couple movies with Vince Vaughn. <laughs> 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 you and Mel Gibson doing Lethal Weapon 9? It would be a great time. Mitch and Scott Bayo buddy comedy. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. Uh, With Antonio Sabato Jr. as the villain. <laughs> and the original, who's the, the original? Christy Swanson's MAGA now, right? Oh, really? There you go. You got a love interest, yeah. The new Buffy. We could reboot Buffy. You could reboot Buffy with the original Buffy. And it's got a it's got hard right politics now. Mitch, do you have a drop for us? Uh, I do. I, I do have a I have a drop for you. 
Today's drop, Nick, comes courtesy of at Emerson349 on Instagram, who writes, here's a drop from White Animal Sound. I don't know what that is, but it might be a band. Uh, hope that this gets spun while Unga Pachka is still a running gag. Thanks, guys. Thank you. And you know what? This drop is a minute long, but I'm going to allow it because we're in quarantine and why not go for a minute? Also, I thought that you were going to do uh, uh, I can't feel my penis. That's what I thought you were going to do. Anyways, thank you at Emerson349. And here's the drop. You add one extra thing and it's ungapachka. It's you got too much going on and oh, you've ruined gosh. your meal. It, it's the same thing, you know. My, you say the word like, too much. You say that word too much. No, it's, I say it the right amount. Right amount. Ungapachka. 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 Myself, I can picture myself strangling you, <laughs> <laughs> and you, and you're just as I'm strangling you, you just keep saying Ungapachka. <laughs> Nick, what a funny drop! <laughs> I was, it was funny, but honestly, it made it was like very emotional too. It kind of made me tear up a little bit. Me too. Like it just, it was like for, it started off funny, but then it like landed a little like s- for, profound. For reasons and sad. that I would rather not get into on the pod, I felt personally attacked by the drop. <laughs> yeah, it had some cheap shots in there towards our guests. Even though, uh, how did they know I would be the guest? <laughs> you know, it, it's kind of prescient. It's it's amazing that they anticipated that. Spoonmandrops at gmail.com if you have a drop you'd like to play on the show. That's right, just email to yes. all, all, all your drops to that email address. <laughs> One more time, that address is... And hey, Mitch, we're continuing our theme month of Frozen Are, are you guys meals. just doing... Are you continuing to do that, or is it just... Because Shampoodler forgets every week what the email address is. <laughs> like, there's just one person doing this. Per singer will get in there sometimes. Oh, that's true. That's true. Uh, frozen Meal Theme Month continues. Doughboy's Topical Freeze. And our guest with us today, very, very excited to have him back from the good place, Big Mouth. And how did this get made? Jason Matsukas is here. Hi, Jason. How are you, boys? And Emma, how are you? We're good. Yeah, we're doing good. We're doing great. We're hanging. We're in hanging there. in there. Thrilled yeah. to be here. Uh, I talked all the way through the intro. Couldn't be stopped. <laughs> <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, I'm a co-host now. I'm not a guest. That uh, <laughs> let me but, introduce uh, today's guest. <laughs> <laughs> For my upcoming movie, you... Scott Bayo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, our, I wanted to ask you because we are obviously in the, the midst of this lockdown. Absolutely. Yes. Are you doing anything? Like, what is your quarantine eating habit? Let's like let's let's start here. Uh, how has your diet been affected by the current regime we are under? My, you know, it's it, it affected you know pretty significantly because I eat. I would say most of my meals out. Wow. Like I am a social. Like my my days are oftentimes structured. Like the daytime is either I'm on a job working or I'm off writing or whatever, have auditions or doing something. And then my only social time really is dinner with friends, which I do most nights. So to have all of that go away has been like, I'm not a home cook. I'm not somebody who is, you know, takes any kind of joy from, you know, getting all the ingredients and making a meal and blah, blah, blah. So this for me has been like a real reality check for a middle-aged man to be like, can you sustain yourself in any way, shape, or form? <laughs> not just not just eating for satiating hunger, but eating for nutritional value and right. for making sure. Mm. So it has been dicey. I'm also someone who is catastrophically germophobic, and so this is my worst nightmare. So. I still have yet to step in any supermarkets. I'm not like so I'm I'm like cobbling it together. 
So are you doing a lot of meal delivery? What is your plan? I'm doing, yes, I'm doing meal delivery basically. Um, like, and I'm trying to group it all at once. So I'll get a bunch of different things at once, put them all in the fridge or freezer, and then eat them over the next week or two. That kind of a thing, essentially. Um, right. Uh, and I'm that's what I'm doing. And then I'm getting, for all of my, like, the other stuff, I'm just ordering off of, like, either amazon fresh or instacart or whatever for like hummus or you know uh, snacks and whatever anything dry goods i can do coffee beans uh, you know oatmeal that shit i just order off of amazon assuming that it can sit in my garage for four days right decontaminating and it's not in any danger nothing perishable are you a coffee guy yes are you, you're like you're like a big because i'm drinking some java right now Okay. You 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 said that as you finished a sip of coffee. Yeah, an audible sip of coffee. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I, am, a big old uh, sip. I make a I make a I make a French press every morning. Uh, wow. And I, I I put it in a a thermal carafe and I drink it for the rest of the day. Come on, what are we doing? You got a bit because you have a I have a pretty substantial mug. I'm holding this up right now. I'm not sure you can see that on camera. This is my what? Monsters Inc. Sully mug. I was gonna say I can't see what the face on the front of it is, but yes, of course. And that is that's Sully's face. That is also the mask you wear when you go outside, right? Just that <laughs> Sully's face, <laughs> or is it a minion's face on the front of it? You got to rotate in all the different CG characters. I'll work a Shrek in there. Of, of uh, course, a chill. Yeah, you have multiple children mugs. <laughs> But this is a pretty substantial honking and mug. And you just this is like, stand drinking from that Pixar mug in front of an open window yelling out to kids on the street? <laughs> Why, <Liger. laughs> You kids want to meet Sully? You can meet Sully up here. Do you know what a French press for me is, Weiger? What? When I'm stuffing some guy from France into the fucking garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Wow. <laughs> Quite xenophobic. <laughs> to, to France. I still think they're cowards. Wow. I love I love that Mitch has not updated his America's villains list since wait, are we talking today about freedom fries? <laughs> Transition Oven freedom Go! fries. Go! Wiger. <laughs> Nick, I was gonna say, speaking of uh of the alt right, which I'm not, the only people that uh on on when I worked at The Simpsons, I gave Scott Bayo a Wait, did you a, work at The Simpsons? <laughs> Huh. <laughs> this is wild. I worked. Yes, I did. I worked at The Simpsons. Uh, from the two. It's starting in 2007 till 2011. I was there for uh, about four years, almost three and a half. Uh, I gave Scott Bayo a, a ride in the cart, and then uh, I just remembered that. Uh, oh God, now I'm going to forget his name. Uh, Angelo. Oh, John Voigt. I got. An, I rode in a cart with John Voigt too. Speaking of republic, hardcore Republicans. Yes. Yeah, I've ridden I've ridden in cars with a bunch of uh with a bunch of right wing people. It's like a shittier version of comedians in cars with coffees. <laughs> <laughs> it's right right wing actors on a golf cart with Mitch. <laughs> Did Bayo get on the cart in 2007 and go take me to the Playboy Club in 1994? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say this, all yeah, all, both of them extremely nice, John Voight specifically was like interested in in everything i was doing it was very nice john voight looks a lot like president shinra in final fantasy 7 remake wow they are just spitting images of each other i wonder if they used that's, his likeness as a basis for the cg model that's a comment where for most people you'd say you've been in quarantine too long but not for nick that's a kind of a common thing <laughs> I feel like that it, on my podcast we would call that out is that seems to me to be suspect because I feel like you're subtly trying to troll this podcast by advertising how did this get played Weiger oh, your boy, video no. game podcast <laughs> this is a classic Paul Shear unspooled situation <laughs> where he suddenly just starts randomly talking about a very good movie on the podcast and we're like wait a minute <laughs> no I wouldn't open that can of worms here too much uh yeah, it's, 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 that's a uh, that's a subject we like to avoid on this oh, podcast. Oh, taboo, taboo. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, taboo. Yeah, yeah. Now you're making it seem like I am this villain about well, your Mitch, own podcast. You are visibly crying. You visit <laughs> at the mention of the name. You threw your headphones down and began crying. <laughs> Weiger knows why I'm mad and has a little something to do with a show we like to call Good Morning America. Mm, yeah. <laughs> GMA baby. GMA. <laughs> 
TMI with, with that <laughs> subject, with GMA. TMI is what they called the TMZ on, and now you're going to think I'm plugging my newsroom recap podcast, but it's what they called TMZ on the newsroom. It was so, like, it, it was just, like, the most on-the-nose choice. Somehow, I, I recently watched all four Sorkin seasons of The West Wing. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it's unimpeachably some of the greatest television writing. That and I just am watching, uh, re-watching Deadwood. Um, right. Which is also just a astonishingly amazing television writing uh, from that same era-ish. Uh, that's not true at all, actually. But what's interesting is... Sorkin is so good in that arena, and then in Newsroom, it is not good. It's bad. Yeah, it doesn't work at all. I think it was almost given just like a little bit too much leash or a little bit too much creative freedom. Like it, it was. There is there are some scenes in Newsroom that are so bad. I think the worst for me is there's a scene on, and this is this is one of those those clips that's been shared repeatedly. But there's a scene on the plane or on a plane, and the context is that this is, this is the episode where bin Laden has been killed, and the guy on the plane has the scoop. One of the characters on the plane has the scoop, uh, but he wants to tell everybody, but it's because they're on a plane, he can't get the scoop out. And so it's just so fucking overwrought and poorly done, and it ends with him, like, screaming at a stewardess. Like, he's, like, yelling at her, but it's like, she's bad. Like, she's, like, a crazy woman for telling him that he can't, like tell the plane that make this big announcement he's to the really plane. mad at her for for not allowing him to quote get the scoop out exactly why do yeah, i it's... feel like that's what you say to natalie when you're gonna go into the other room before bed <laughs> <laughs> before we go to sleep i'm just gonna step out and get the scoop out <laughs> Ooh, i might have to put this into the microwave a few seconds it's hard <laughs> Are you, Jason, I know, I, and we should talk about this. That yes, you I'm are, a creamsman. Yes, I'm a creamsman. <laughs> Jesus. You're canonically a creamsman, uh, as are we. But I, this is a thing we mentioned. No. We talked about on the first show, uh, the, the first time you were on the show. And we should recap it real quick in case this is new to anyone else. But you have a, a serious allergy that uh, affects your, your, your eating habits. Yeah, so I'm, um, and I'm sure many people are tired of hearing me talk about it, so I'll just very briefly say, I have a life-threatening allergy to eggs. So I have the same allergy to eggs that people have to nuts or bee stings. Like, it will kill me, anaphylaxis, you know, swelling, dying, all that kind of stuff. I carry an EpiPen. I can't eat anything that uses egg in the preparation of a dish, not just, like, an egg on a thing, but, like, right. no noodles or in sauces or dressings or egg as any component of anything, you know, uh, will just straight up kill me. There is there like a, a food that people assume is safe that isn't or, or something that you wouldn't expect to have eggs in it that does have eggs in it? You know, people don't oftentimes think through like people think a lot of times people are like the obvious things, what they picture a lot of eggs in like breakfasts, you know? Right. Yes. Obviously breakfasts pretty much gone. You know, your pancakes, French Damn. toasts, waffles, all that shit. I've never had it, you know, gone. Um, baked goods gone, but people don't always think it through to like noodles and like, right. temp like, uh, battered things and like stuff like that. And so there's a lot of, or sauces are get me a lot in like the more complex a dish is the more like, like one time I was eating something, it was a salmon dish and it was like. It was, uh, the restaurant was AOC, super complex dishes, really mm -hmm. like delicious restaurant. And I asked them like three times, are you sure this is okay? And they were like, oh yes, absolutely. And there was something about it that I was like, oh, this is making me really anxious, this dish, just because it looked like there was so much going on. And I asked one last time and the guy was really annoyed at me and I could tell he was annoyed. My, my dinner companion was like, this guy hates you. And then he came That's sprinting out of the kitchen towards our table and goes, you haven't eaten any of that, have you? And I was like, I haven't yet. Why? And he was like, well, the salmon is safe. It is egg free. But the candied apples on top are candied with egg yolks. Oh, wow. I was like, 
oh, well, then <sighs> this dish has egg in it. Like, yeah. I was like, what's happening right now? So, <laughs> or it's like, or it'll get, sometimes it'll get me like breadcrumbs. People won't think like, oh, that dish has breadcrumbs on it. And the bread used to make the breadcrumbs had eggs in it. So it's like that is how I get burned a lot. Little weird ways, not obvious clunky things, you know? Right. Because Aegis uses a so- binder, binder in so many places. Go on, Mitch. He shouldn't have gotten so. Also, oh, that's gross, by the way, Wagger. Uh, your little fun fact that egg is used as a binder. Um, he shouldn't have gotten so upset. He shouldn't have gotten so upset What's over the fact that. What's gross about that? It's just a weird. It's gross. It's a binder. I don't know. It, 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 egg is used as a binder. It's kind of a gross statement, I guess. Well, no, I mean, like, because here's the thing. A lot of egg replacements do a similar thing, like, but a lot of them are sweet, like uh, molasses or some things like that can be used to replace egg or, like, cum is also another <laughs> thing that can be yeah. used. It's a little saltier, though. That's uh, what to I was me, getting that's at, gross. That's, that's gross to me. <laughs> I that's get what it now. Was, that's what it was like. Mitch, I agree with you. You just said cum is gross. Um <laughs> It's gross. It's all over the place. Weiger is your <laughs> why it's all over the place. It's just it's like a sprinkler going off. It's, it's everywhere. I feel like cum is one of the things you can actually control pretty well where it goes. It's not going all over the place. I'm always step I'm always stepping in it. It's fucking disgusting. <laughs> you stop nutting on your floor. We've talked Foul. about this. Floor nut. <laughs> Put put this in the pod. Make this part longer, Emma. Somehow, <laughs> somehow pad pad this part. Just say floor say, nut uh, a few more times. <laughs> floor nut. Uh, 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 Zooks, I was gonna I was gonna say to you, uh, is, you, is it okay if I call you Zooks? Yes, Mitch. Of course it's okay. You call me Zooks. <laughs> you fucking weirdo. <laughs> I was about to say that. Halloween, uh, uh, God, did I already say this on the last time we were on? Halloween must be truly scary. I was hit by an egg on Halloween from teenagers in a truck, like in a pickup truck. Uh, that's in insane. That's Swamp Scott, Massachusetts. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, no, it, maybe it was in the hunt. Either way, I can't remember. But yeah, no, I was, I was hit by like kids just driving by throwing eggs at groups. And I got hit and had to go home. And th- this insane. being Massachusetts, you chased down the 12-year-olds responsibly and curb stomped them, right? Yeah, baby. It was me. It was Wu-Tang. <laughs> it was <laughs> Frail Mike. Was it was there. Micus, Frail Bob. Shanked in. Shanked in. <laughs> <laughs> the whole crew. Frail Bob is a North Shore guy now. Oh, really? Where? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. I forget. Uh, who cares? Fuck that guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad guessing because I, cause I don't know if it's a, I don't know if I'd be Oh, right. it's okay. Don't worry about it. Plus, right? it's better that people don't know where he is because they'll go find him. <laughs> that's the kind of that's the kind of fans you guys have. Do you know where? Do you? I know where Chankton lives, guys. We can go talk to him. I know. I know where Dano lives. Oh, <laughs> uh, what's gonna happen with Chankton is that if it's like what my last weekend was like, you'll be up at four in the morning on a zoom call with him uh half biffed wiger as my dad used to say half biffed half in the bag what is that you know ne- you never heard of half biffed before no it must be a regional thing yeah like half in the bag yeah six sheets to the wind okay all right i get it yeah i get it we were listening to uh slipping by dmx we both tear it up that gives you a <laughs> this is oh so so you were having phone sex <laughs> Pretty close to it, yeah. Half biffed listening to DMX jerking off with your buddy while you openly weep. <laughs> Pulling a zoom autofocus. <laughs> um, I want. We began by the, the this egg discussion by uh, by talking in uh, about sweet treats, and so I wanted to ask you because we are in the summer months. What are your what what sweet treats work for your diet? What do you go with when you want to have something with a little bit of sugar in it? Well, I'll say this: um, I am the recent explosion in like high end ice cream shops opening. I don't know if it's going on in your town, wherever you're listening, but in Los Angeles, there's suddenly. You know, uh, Van Leeuwen and McCall's and uh, what's the Magpies and all of these 
you know, like um, higher end ice cream shops and almost all of them do vegan options, right. which I'm sure to you guys tastes like dog shit. But to me, <laughs> I'm like, this is fucking great. So right. I'll do with that. I'll go to one of those spots or um, I will in the freezer section of the uh, 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 of the thing. So basically egg is egg is in things that are usually fresh. So like I can eat ice cream that is kind of bad. So like I can I can traditionally eat like an ice cream sandwich or uh, a drumstick, something that is meant to last forever in a freezer and not spoil won't have won't have egg in it. But so I can I can eat like a like a Briars ice cream, um, but I can't have any of the Ben and Jerry's Hagen Dazs, any of the Ooh. good ice creams. Like I was the kid, Mitch, you might understand this, at a birthday party who could only eat a hoodsy. I 100% can understand that. Emma is That's, nodding. Emma, Emma probably understands that as well. <laughs> yeah. What is a hoodsy? Hoodsy cups. My grandmother yeah. used to get huge things of hoodsy cups. It was like a treat at her house in the afternoons in the summer. It's like a little cup of ice cream. It's a little cup of very bad ice cream. Like yep. not creamy at all. It is watery. It's like in well, a you've cup actually, you actually, you actually just, thing. You actually just, you just made me mad. Why? You like it? You think it's good ice cream? Hoodsies are, I think hoodsies are delicious. No, oh, yeah, boy. I love them for nostalgia's sake. For nostalgia's yeah. sake, absolutely. But hoodsie is uh, unimpeachably not good ice cream. It's no Brigham's. They're always so frozen because they were so little. They were like rocks. They were so yes. cold. Yeah. Uh, yes. Because I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm like you, Mitch, I'm a Brigham's stan. I'm Brigham's all Hell day, yeah. every day. Uh, they had a flavor called Nestle Crunch that was my favorite ice cream until they discontinued it. Um, it is still available in the Northeast in quartz. I don't know if you know yeah. this in supermarkets, Brigham's. Yeah, it's wow, still yeah. alive, yep. uh, but only in uh, in that fashion. No longer. Which also there's 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 the last surviving Brigham's was basically Quincy had one of the three. Uh, and they they've turned it into the the owner turned it into a place called the ice cream parlor, and it oh. is basically it is basically the last surviving Brigham's. Uh, Dieter Dieter Lumbauer he runs it, and uh, it's 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 basically is a Brigham's. I get I get raspberry lime rickies there and mocha fraps and everything, and it's it, it rules. Yeah, that was like Brigham's or Friendlies were like as a kid real mm. like let's go to we're gonna go to Friendlies. And we're all gonna hang out. We're gonna do dumb yeah. bits. We're gonna eat a, you know, a, a fribble. We're gonna have a fribble or a, what was the, um, the one that's a name? Shit, it's been too long since I've been to a friendlies, but I forget now. Anyway, I've like I've never had eat- a fribble because uh, we went we went to friendlies when we were on the East Coast. We went to uh, we went in Massachusetts. We went in Western Mass, and so I've had a fribble. I'm nice. gonna look at the friendlies menu real quick, see if we can figure out what you're discussing. But go, but go on, Jason. Oh, I that was so friendlies and Brigham's to me huge, but a hoodsie was not very good. But so I can eat some ice cream things. <laughs> yes. Um just not what people love when they get ice cream, usually. Like the good stuff I usually it has a custard base and that's egg uh in that custard. Right. I, I did the so so the uh you you mentioned hoodsie and I looked at I, I, I Googled this and it is like a thing that we've we've had woodsy equi- or hoodsie equivalents out here. It's just not that brand. But I know the idea of like the cup, the small like four ounce cup of just like shitty super processed ice cream that you eat with like a disposable wooden spoon. Like I mean kind of that my grandma used to have those in her freezer. Exactly. And that was a, just a delightful treat. So yeah, yeah. I, I know it, but I, I get it. I, I understand that it's just a nostalgic fondness. It's not totally. actually quality. I wouldn't eat one now Con- versus like, I feel like a San Francisco thing that's similar to the Hoodsy is the It's It. Oh, yeah. Which oh, yeah. Is, it's It is great. Which is awesome, I think. Yeah, it's like, fantastic. It's it, I can eat an It's It, and now they have those in supermarkets as well, and it's fantastic. There's not even so an it's it if you're not familiar with it is just ba- basically a cookie an ice cream cookie sandwich that's got some sort of coating usually chocolate but there isn't even an egg in the cookie I'm surprised there is that's what I was shocked about as well but again because it has to be shelf stable for that long mm-hmm. they're just they don't put egg in it you know wow um Wiger you know what's another good uh, uh grandma's freezer item frozen OJ that's a good grandma freezer item now what are you what are talking you, about Mitch? what are you talking about yeah what is this. <laughs> 
What do you mean? All, th- all three of us on the Zoom call just made a face like, what the fuck? <laughs> Especially just... with the vehemence with which you said it, knowing full well that we were all going to be like, of course, Mitch. <laughs> of course. Grandma's freezer. Ice cream Grandma's cups freezer. and frozen OJ? Yeah, the frozen OJ in the container that you put into a thing and then you turn it into a big thing oh, of OJ. You know what I'm Yes, we You're did You're talking do about that. concentrated, oh. like, yeah. co- like a concentrate. I see, I see. I'm I not see. that crazy anymore, huh? I thought your grandmother was taking gallons of orange juice and just sticking them in the freezer. I was like, yeah, oh no, Mitch grew up with a lunatic grandmother that he doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, my favorite thing in grandma's freezer, turkey slices. Mm. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Helen Donovan was a saint. Yeah, you frame that as like a as like a treat though. Like we, you were just having, you just like orange juice from concentrate. I didn't eat fucking concentrated orange juice out of the can, frozen orange juice out of the can. I'm just saying it's a good grandma, it's a good ga- grandma freezer thing. Yeah, sure, that's sure, okay, something grandma mean. always had. Yeah, yeah, I get, I get that now. Yeah, I can't find this friendlies. The only thing I can find is the fribble, <sighs> Jim Dandy, and then Jim Dandy and then the is the frenzy. one. Ooh, okay, Jim, the Jim, Jim Dandy, Dandy is, is that the a one Sunday? I was, is the is the Sunday I was thinking of? Whew, just came to me. Wow. Love wow, it. well, there you go. We always used to get the Monster Mash. I think it was like mint chip ice cream with the cookies as the ears. I used to do the one. Yeah, that's good. I used to do the one that also had like Reese's Pieces in it. And I uh-huh. can't remember what yes. that one was called. That was a good one, too, because it had peanut that, butter syrup. That might have been. They might have just been. They might have been like a Reese's Sunday or something yeah. like that. Right. Or it probably had some stupid name. Uh, and also the classic, which I told Weiger, which I think we did get is the. Uh, the ice cream man, the the uh, the the scoop of ice cream with the yep. Reese's Pieces face and the yep. cone head. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. How fun was that? I, I love That's the great. little ice cream guy. We do. We always do the Baskin Robbins clown Sunday, which was I just a similar don't feel trait. like you've spent enough time in Boston, Weiger, <laughs> to really to really say these things. <laughs> I agree with this. Here's what I'll say. If you guys are ever in, because I know Hodgman horned in on Boston last time, I would like if we are ever in that area, like concurrently again, if we ever leave our homes again (laughs) and we find ourselves on the North Shore, I would like to do Mino. uh, I would like to do Kelly's roast beef. Yes. Yes. Kelly's roast beef. Or a comparison of the roast beef sandwiches in... Boston, but I would say Kelly's is the iconic one. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so that is my. That I'm like. I want to put my. You know, quarters on that board. As I, I have next game on that. Weiger, don't say Kelly's roast beef with a question mark at the end about it. I told you we, this was almost our live show in Boston. We've discussed Kelly's roast beef, but for those go. of okay. us who haven't had it before, uh, what what is the what could one expect at a Kelly's, and what is the thing to get? I, I mean, mean, go ahead, Mitch. I was just gonna say you get a roast beef sandwich with basically everything on it. On and but some are we sort talking of- like is it is it like a you know like a like a a beef dip like we might think of like a French dip out here? What are you getting exactly? No, it's like a sub essentially, except it's a sandwich. Uh, it's a roll. Uh, okay. Or you can't. I mean, there are various ways to put it together, but it's kind of like a sub shop, except the only available meat is roast beef. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> um, it's, you know, like roast beef shops are a, such a thing throughout New England. Like the one we used to go to is called Mino's Roast Beef in Marblehead. Um, mm. And that's where like all of the late night post whatever, we, everybody would go to Mino's, everybody would pack in. And then there would be some sort of turf fist fight between the kids from Swampscott and the kids from Marblehead <laughs> because there was such a rivalry <laughs> And invariably, that sounds about right. Uh, you know, like every Boston night, everything ends in every location ends in a fight, and your group either gets to stay and eat or is kicked out. So, right. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, like that's a that's a Boston evening right there. We 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 it was Quincy versus Milton and uh, yep. Mil- Milton, we always thought is, was it was kind of like the snootier, the, uh, the Richie, the town. Richie Riches. That's what that's what the, the headers riches. Marblehead Marblehead was very rich to us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I remember there was a big Quincy Milton fight. And uh, I have, I maybe have told this before, Nick, but uh, Wu Tang was fighting. Everyone was fighting. I, and of course, I was standing on the sidelines being like, oh my God, this is crazy. I'm scared. And uh, the cops came. We all ran. And I got into a car and we drove off. And then uh, 
I realized as we were driving, uh, I was in a, a car with the Milton kids. <laughs> <laughs> you have told this before, and it's great. I have told it before. I, I, yeah, yeah I, cower- I cowardly ran away, and I got into the car with the Milton kids, and they were like, hey, we should kick this guy's ass. Oh, How did you luckily- know? How long were you in the ha- the car before they noticed that it, that you weren't in their crew? It was like a it was like at least like a couple minutes. We were on the road, <laughs> and you like enrolled. Like until the you enrolled. Down. You lived yeah. in Milton for like three months after that, right? Yeah, I, I really played it up. I was like those damn Quincy kids, fucking <laughs> Wu Tang. You can drop me off. I live near this guy. Just drop me off over near him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so lazy that I probably would still get driven home. Um, it was a, uh, it was, it was very, it was a, uh, it was, it was a terrifying night, Dick. That's such a weird. Inter- so what happens? Did they just pull over and let you out and kick you out? What happened? They pulled over because the one year when I went to Thayer for one year, I went yes. with a kid, Phil Dalton, who was a Milton kid, and I loved him, and he was a guy who, uh, who was like one of my my good buddies at Thayer for that year. He was a great guy and is a great guy. Mm. Uh, but he was Thayer, like, I know cor- him. He- cor- correct me, Mitch. They're a private school. Pri- Thayer is a private school. I, Ooh, I, that, that might- no. Who's oh, Tony boy. now? Who's a Richie Rich now? <laughs> Quincy boy goes to Thayer. <laughs> I, I got my freshman year. My mom taught at North Quincy High School. And my and I I basically got sent to there my my freshman year of of of, uh, of high school and I had never been to pri- I had never been to private school my entire life yeah and it and it still to this day makes me mad I never I, I I hated it and then I went to North Quincy the next year yeah great so you did one year private basically to like ship up or shape out was that was that kind of the what was going on or sh- that was- ship up or shape out Weiger do you think that's <laughs> you think that's how that phrase goes <laughs> let me think let me turn it over in my head again ship up. Or shape out. <laughs> yes, I think that's. I'm going to double down. It's ship up or shape out. Let's do boys double down on that. Let's lock him in. <laughs> Weirdly, Weiger is correct because I did ship out, and then I I I, I, I did ship up, and then I did also shape out. I shape. I <laughs> <laughs> took on the shape of a big oval. <laughs> I just liked there a lot. It was. Pri- a private school and it felt snooty to me and I didn't like and, and Ryan Whitney was my bully of course we've talked about this before and he's now uh hosts he not only did he become a successful hockey player in the NHL but then he goes on and he hosts a po- uh, a, a highly successful podcast have you had it you guys should have him on Doughboys we should have him Settle we should have him at some point we <laughs> truly what it, it, it would be fun to do like a like uh, I'm I'm ready to square up against you uh, to Ryan Winnie and then still have him kick my ass at like 37. <laughs> I mean, he you said he was a professional hockey player. He so was a professional hockey player. I think player. there's no doubt he's. I don't think there's ever gonna come a time that you're gonna get one over on him. Yeah, he's a professional <laughs> athlete. I would love it if Mitch committed to getting so in shape and Jack just to kick this one guy's ass. <laughs> like somehow this is the only thing holding Mitch back from accessing true success is this one bully <laughs> and Mitch's singular focus on revenge. Oh, that would be pretty great. As aggrieved as Mitch is and as much as he holds a grudge forever, you'd think that would motivate him enough. You'd think that would be a factor. This is bullshit. It's because you 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 say this because I hold grudges against you. You're just an annoying man. You annoy me. <laughs> I'm friendly. Oh, this, is, this is GMA all over again. I'm a regular Jim Dandy. <laughs> oh, you, you can't even touch Jim Dandy. <laughs> Piece of shit. So, but I want, but wait, this, this, this anecdote, I, I, st- I need closure on this. You were, so you knew someone from the, the high school that you were, you knew, you had a friend, you had someone on the yeah. inside, inside this car. That's why you were spared. Luckily, Phil Dalton was there and he was like, oh, no, no, he's, he's cool. He's a coward. Just let him out. <laughs> <laughs> oh no no no! He went to private school and likes Dave Matthews, so we can. He's cool, guys. Don't worry. He stands you know what? for what he stands for. What we stand for. What's that exactly? I better not say. <laughs> Truly, th- that is th- that is probably they probably would have gotten a pass on that. <laughs> Do you know who's from Milton? Jenny Jenny Slate, originally from Milton. She is. Wow! Yep. How about that? Yep. She better not come out at Quincy. Oh, oh wow! Boy. Wow, that would be huge. <laughs> Every time I feel like that we have a guest from Massachusetts on the show, uh-huh. and I feel like I hear about a town I didn't know existed. How there are just so many towns there. Oh yeah. Oh, we could keep. I mean, are you kidding? 
We haven't even, we've barely, if we do Kelly's roast beef, we're doing the one in Revere. And Revere. Yeah. God help us if we get out alive. <laughs> <laughs> Like, like the, the danger that one has to assume to go to the Revere Beach <laughs> Kelly's Roast Beef at night is, it's a good sandwich, but you are putting your life in your hands. Revere, tough town. <laughs> wow. Winthrop, tough town. Paul's namesake, Revere, a tough town. I would think it would be, I think it would be lovely. I don't think it's, I don't know that it's named after Paul Revere, is it? You fool is he named wagger. after there? I bet it, it. Maybe it is. I never even gave. I never even gave that a thought. But I bet you're right, Weiger. I would have thought that that was my first thought, just because that's the only Revere I know. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. It, it, it was renamed in 1871 for Paul Revere. Wow. So yes. Yeah. There you go. Wow. It was, yeah. So it, it's it was originally Pullen Point, I guess. Where everybody went to pull their puds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys going to pull and point tonight? Yeah. I gotta get the poison out. I gotta it's... I gotta get a binder. I need I'm making a I'm making an egg free loaf tomorrow. I need a binder. <laughs> so I'm gonna head up to pull and point. Pull and point, the opposite of make out creek. So if you're if you're going solo, you gotta pull and point. If you got a partner, you gotta make out creek. Sudden, suddenly Wiger's interest in going back to Massachusetts has just spiked back up. <laughs> Flights are really cheap right now. <laughs> Weiger, why are you packing a bag right now on the pod? <laughs> it's all Vaseline. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's splitting so it's... much Vaseline into so many three-ounce containers. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with more Doughboys. <laughs> hey, in these trying times, it's nice to support your loved ones and your community if you have the means. An unexpected gift, an extra large tip, be sure to do that if you're getting takeout, or in particular if you're dining out at a patio or something like that. Boost that gratuity. The floor is no longer 15%. It's way higher. And things may have changed around us, but our inner drive to be there for the people who we care about runs deeper than ever. When we come together as a community, we empower ourselves to make meaningful change. Our normal has changed, and we're finding new ways to connect and continue supporting one another. We started social distancing when we spend time with friends and explore local cuisine. And we're... What if you're just finding out about this now, through me? Social distancing? Watch the news. And we're doing more to support and advocate for underrepresented communities. So what we need more than ever is an easy way to support each other from afar. The solution. PayPal. There you go. With the PayPal app, sending and receiving money is faster or easier. Who knew? It was PayPal all along. Stay connected with the people you love. Quickly and securely send money to friends and family just about anywhere in the world. Start a money pool to split the bill or go in on a gift or fundraise for a good cause. Support the places and causes you care about the most. Make touch-free QR code payments at your local restaurant or favorite farmer's market. Donate to a local nonprofit or support a cause from across the country. PayPal is making it easy to pay safely, quickly, and easily. Download the PayPal app today. Terms and conditions apply. Do you experience stress or have anxiety or chronic pain or have trouble sleeping at least once a week? You are not alone. Many of us do, including myself. E, all of the above. Anxiety, trouble sleeping... Those bothered me the most. I was searching for anything that would help. Then I discovered feels. What is feels? F-E-A-L-S, feels. Feels is premium CBD delivered directly to your doorstep. Feels naturally helps reduce stress, anxiety, pain, and sleeplessness. Place a few drops of feels under your tongue and feel the difference within minutes. Now, the product is called feels, F-E-A-L-S. But feel the difference here is spelled traditionally F-E-E-L. So feels is the product. Feel is what you will do. The thing to remember about CBD is that finding your right dose is important and everyone's dose is different. So leave room to experiment over the course of a week or so. 
You may need to take more or less to get the effects you're after. New to CBD, Feels offers a free CBD hotline to help guide your personal experience. Uh, breaker, breaker, uh, having trouble sleeping. That's a 10-4, good buddy. Feels works naturally to help you feel better. There's no high hangover or addiction. CBD uh, hotlines kind of sounds like CB radio. That's where I was going with there. Join the Feels community to get Feels delivered to your door every month. You'll save money on every order, and you can pause or cancel anytime. By the way, I know we get some long-haul truckers who listen to the podcast. God bless you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for your service. Stay safe out there on the road. Feels has me feeling my best every day, and it can help you too. Become a member today by going to feels.com slash doughboys, and you get 50% off your first order with free shipping. That's F-E-A-L-S dot com slash doughboys to become a member and get 50% automatically taken off your first order with free shipping. Feels.com slash doughboys. Welcome back to Doughboys. Our guest, Jason Mantzoukas. This month, we are doing Topical Freeze, a bunch of frozen meals. And this week, we are reviewing Or Ida. The potato, ch- the potato brand, rather, stands for Oregon, Idaho, or Ida does. Founded by the Briggs is- Brothers in 1952, yes? As I incorrectly call it, Oriida. I, I think I think Ori Ida is close. I mean, I think there's a case for that because it is like Oregon, and it, so you start to do if you start to pronounce that next syllable. I, I, I there's a, there's a case for Ori Ida, uh, but I but I believe it's Ori Ida is the correct pronunciation. I guess um, we'll just ne- we'll never know. The real we'll never answer. have closure on this. They Ori Ida invented tater tots. The Briggs brothers who founded it are the, wow. the, the, Wait, the creators of tater. Yeah, they are the they wow. are the Tater Tots is their brand. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a thing they pr- purportedly invented. Currently owned by Heinz, and they are the largest U.S. frozen potato brand. Uh, so, Mitch, before we we move on, you had you uh, during the break you said you had something you wanted to return to. Well, I want to ask you. I had a Quincy. I had a Quincy trivia question, which is uh, okay. Very, very much related to food. Uh, also, I was going to ask you. Uh, what I want to ask you is: Is it does Massachusetts have a lot of towns? Like is that a, it, it, that stands out to you for some reason? That was the other thing that kind of just. I think this is the thing that I don't. I like if I started talking about hyper specific Southern California geography, there would be mm-hmm. maybe a but like maybe you haven't necessarily heard of you know uh, Rancho Cucamonga or whatever. You know what I mean? Like there might be that you might. What are you maybe talking you, about, man? That's where workaholics yeah. takes place. All right, bro. It's fine. You've heard of Rancho Cucamonga, <laughs> Rancho it's not a good baby. One. <laughs> you picked the you picked the, you picked one that everybody knows. You sound like an idiot, Weiger. Uh, fine. Maybe you haven't heard of Artesia or Downey or Bellflower or Paramount. I love all know? three. I love all four yeah. of those. <laughs> City of Industry. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. But I, when I, anytime I hear about Massachusetts, I'm just like, oh, because I only think of the I I only ever hear you know Quincy or Walliston. That's a town. Well, right? here's I, like here's the no. thing. Like, <clears throat> I mean, my town. Not mm-hmm. Massachusetts is one square mile. It is tiny. So, wow. so what Massachusetts has a lot of is small towns all clustered together. That makes yeah. sense. So that's probably why. So that's so I feel like there are like six Massachusetts towns that would make up one LA town. It's like the states. Right, that- you got bigger states on the West Coast and smaller states on the East Coast. You got smaller towns too. Everything's yeah. just we're the we're the state capital of the country. Wait, fuck. We're the town wow. capital. What? Oh, God damn it. What? <laughs> what does that mean? Get it together, Mitch. <laughs> Get it. You got this. You can land this plane. Mitch, ship up or <laughs> shape out. <laughs> we're the town We're the town capital of the world. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> uh, that's on the license plate. Massachusetts, the town capital of the world. <laughs> um, Mitch, what was, your, what was your trivia? And I also want to say city of industry. Bad Come up with something better than City of Industry. It, it's yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty unimaginative town name. I Look, mean, it's very of course, on the nose. Working, there was a lot of working class people work there. It, it, it makes sense. It's just too on the. Listen, a, only a fair private school kid would shit on a working class town like City of Industry <laughs> like this. Wow. No. Wow. I'm I'm shocked, Mitch. I'm shocked. I thought you were blue collar, but I guess not fair. <laughs> I told Zooks about how I was roasted. I shouldn't, you know what? I shouldn't let, I shouldn't show my weaknesses. And also, why? Because I'm going to show another weakness now is that 
on my license, I actually had Wollaston on my license, and it's a neighborhood in Quincy. Mm -hmm. And when I was in college, everyone was like, you always talk about you're from Quincy so much, which I did back when I was 19 and 20. And they were like, and you're from Wollaston. And that was their running joke was that I was from Wollaston. Oh. And it was very, very annoying to me. Uh, it pissed me off. Um, mm. I'm from Quincy. What, I mean, what would have to happen for you to turn against Quincy? Like, imagine what would have to take place for Mitch to, like, truly turn against that town. That, like, this is because this is something that is so powerfully you identify with. It's wild. <laughs> I think, like, they'd have to, like, pull down my pants and laugh at me and poke me out of town, I guess. That sounds like a fantasy of yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. It came so quick and was so specific. <laughs> like, you've clearly thought. Like, maybe they'd put, like, a stockade in the city square and I'd have to, like, have my bottom, <laughs> my tushy exposed and everybody's going to spank my bum and tell me I'm no good. <laughs> then I get kicked out of town, drive straight for Pullin' Point. <laughs> I, I'm yeah I, I I don't I like this is this is a, a place where you and I differ just as men because my hometown Lakewood California I don't give a shit about and I could just like I could turn my back on that forever over nothing like I just don't care I have no allegiance to it Jesus I'd at least do it for money or something well and I you know I'm fond of my hometown um, but never like Mitch does would I yearly go and live there for a month yeah you know right. i i think i would lose my mind if i did that yeah you know? um but i also it's beautiful there too though oh it's so pretty which is why i'm happy to go for a week uh, and see my family and hang out and you know walk around it's such a pretty town it's great i love nahant massachusetts Truly, it's like where the first game of lawn tennis was played in the united states and has one of the oldest libraries in america don't worry about it wow I don't think the library thing might be apocryphal, but the tennis thing is right. Lawn tennis is amazing. Wait a second. Libraries yeah. and tennis? Who's snooty now? Oh, yeah. No, there is there is a part of Nahant that is quite <laughs> Tony. Um, uh, very Tony. Like, Nahant is a real, for a one square mile town, it is split between very wealthy and, like, the, like, the class difference is very stark. And it That's is amazing. literally in this tiny town. There, It's an island town off the coast of Massachusetts. And there's, like, two... Two blobs of of land, and the smaller blob was like the servants' quarters for turn of the century wealthy Bostonians who had bigger houses on Big Nahant. Little Nahant was wow. where like smaller houses were for like servants' quarters and stuff. It's like a wild thing that from the turn of the century till now still maintains some sort of you know class differential. Wow, w w Weiger's never even had a bar pizza. I've when we were you, you left too quickly. You got out of Massachusetts as soon as you could. Um, I yeah, I when I when I went to college, I never came back to Massachusetts to live. You know, once right. I oh no, I was I was I was saying Nick just in his quick visit, he left immediately. I we stay I stayed like an extra day. It was fine. <laughs> what did you What do you want from me? I want you to come hang around. I think you should go live with Mitch's mom for a month. <laughs> and Mitch, I agree. And Mitch should live with Natalie for a month. <laughs> you guys, you guys should do a full life swap. Yeah, a wife slash mom swap. That would I, honestly, I think both of their lives would improve. Wait, is wife slash mom a description of Mitch's mom, or is this a combination? I think it works for both. When my dad passed away, I got the title. She be, when my dad passed away, the title was handed down to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, dad, like, mom became like, wife. <laughs> like in Deadwood, when, um, when Seth Bullock's brother is killed in the war, he marries his brother's widow and raises their child as his own. You, now that your father has passed, you have to marry your mother. That's how it works. That's at least how it works in Quincy. This is sick shit. Quincy's not like that at all. It's a good place. <laughs> I get along well with Mrs. Mitchell. We we have a nice rapport. All right. We do. We have a we had a lo we've had some lovely conversations. I stayed at she's, your house. I stayed at your house for multiple nights. We had a lovely time. She's not that fond of you. Did, can I ask you, Weiger? <laughs> yes. Was there at any point, Weiger, were you peeking? <laughs> all right. <laughs> All right, I have, I have two things to say. Yes. Uh, also, actually, here's the third thing. is uh, uh, 
no, I won't say this third thing because you'll get too mad at me, actually. I'll say okay. two things. All right, I'll, the, there's a Quincy trivia question uh, that Mike, Mike is. We, I do Quincy trivia every Saturday night. We play Quincy trivia. Uh, Got it. How could there be that much Quincy trivia to play it every <laughs> week? <laughs> to every week you play Quincy <laughs> trivia? Like, examine your life and the choices you've made, Mitch. <laughs> to clear it up... <laughs> The questions aren't about Quincy. I should have been clear about that. Okay. Oh, this is your okay. Quincy crew. It's my it's Quincy crew. It's just a crew. trivia night with the Quincy. I got it. I got it. Forgive me. Go ahead. With It's it's trivia night with the Quincy crew. Got it. And uh, Mike has had a food-related question. I want to ask it to you two, uh, to, to you guys. Uh, yeah, and yes. Emma, too. All three. All three. Um, Mike has asked, all right, Heinz subtracted by the combined total. Sorry. <clears throat> Heinz. Heinz flavors combined by the total flavors of Dr. Pepper plus flavors of original Baskin Robin ice cream flavors. So Heinz varieties. Okay. Minus flavors of Dr. Flavors in Dr. Pepper minus okay. original Baskin Robin's ice cream flavors. So I don't remember the number of flavors in Dr. Pepper. That's my issue. I have a general, I think, wow. I think I know the Heinz and I obviously know the Baskin Robbins, but the Dr. Pepper, I just have to take a wild guess. I wouldn't know Heinz either. Yeah, I don't know Heinz. I'm assuming this is the Jimmy Buffett Heinz 57. Yes, that's where we're, Why? that's where you we're got going one. from. Okay, right. so, fi so 57, and then I'm just going to guess that there are 21 Dr. Pepper flavors somewhere in that range. I know I'm not exactly mm. right. So that is what? That puts it at 36 plus 31. No, it's subtracting again. You're subtracting. You subtract oh, both. you're subtracting again. Okay. So mm -hmm. five is my answer? It's three is the answer. It's but three. Okay. Close. So it's in the right ballpark. Tw wow. 23, 23 flavors in Dr. 23. Pepper. 23. Who got? How? Did anyone get that right? How is that possible? I, you know what we we on the on this podcast we we played a little game where we we try to guess the numbers of the or we try to guess the flavors in Dr Pepper. Remember that, Wags? Yeah. You know what I will say? I did do during this quarantine. I ordered a box on. It came. I think I got it on Amazon, but it was a box of root beers. Wow! Like wow. a box of all different random, hmm. like like uh, like local root beers. Or you know, small batch right. root beers, and it was awesome. That's not, yeah, that that sounds like it rules. Any standouts from that? You know, there were there were a couple. I should I should have made a. I didn't write them down, and I don't remember the names because they were all completely unknown to me. Wow! Uh, but a bunch of them were terrific. Ab absolutely, yeah. Do you know in my house, Nick, uh, root beer is a binder. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Did we talk about Mitch? Have we talked about Moxie on this show? Oh my God! No, we ha we haven't talked about Moxie. Weiger, no. have you ever tried Moxie? That's what is Moxie? the move. Moxie okay. as a drank or stank is we where it's get at. Some. What is Moxie? It's a soda. Uh, is that regional to New England? It's a yes, soda. Yes, Maine. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. It's like in an orange can. It's funny. My brother once thought it was orange soda and insisted on me buying it for him, and then he sipped it and <laughs> hated it. <laughs> it's like. It's literally like tasting melted down pennies or yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's it is awful. It's and it's not alcoholic. It's, no, no, it's a soda. So this is this is like a non-alcoholic Malort. It sounds like it's like a local. It's a proper local soda that is like black licorice -y kind of pennies kind of. That's the taste taken to an extreme, though. It is it's a brutal drink. Yeah, it's I like think. bitter and herbal. Why do all these regions have just like something that tastes like shit that they have that this is like, this is our thing? It's I a, think they used to be things that were almost like medicines. No, you yeah, what that's I mean? what like, this is saying. Moxie is flavored with gentian root extract, which is an extremely bitter substance commonly used in herbal medicine. Yeah. Wow, I feel okay. like all these things started as like, yeah. like, yeah, medicine type things that then somehow just became like local sodas that were made you know, for just this market, you know? Right. So after that, that everyone was taking it to cure the Spanish flu and then it just kind of endured in the aftermath. I think Trump just announced that the way to beat coronavirus is a, a one uh, a can of moxie. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Breaking chews. It's going to be a rush on that.
That's uh that 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 is funny. Like the things that they consider treat. My my dad loved black licorice and like he mm-hmm. loved black jelly beans and stuff like that. And he'd hide them in his in his drawer at uh, his dresser drawer. Draw. Oh god, dresser oh, drawer. Dresser <laughs> draw. Dresser <laughs> drawer. Drawer. Dresser <laughs> drawer. Drawer. <laughs> he'd hide them in his dresser drawer and uh and uh where it was like no one you don't have to hide black jelly beans from anybody. It's a, it's a, it was a. Uh, it was a uh, sweet treat in Massachusetts. In 19- it's in Massachusetts. It's a little dicey <laughs> in Boston. <laughs> you know, they were they were still separating black jelly beans into the seventies. <laughs> oh no, no, no! <laughs> your, your dad was part of a long Boston tradition of just separating. <clears throat> <laughs> My dad was a good man. But he was like, "I'm ashamed of these black jelly beans. I can't let anybody see them. I can't let." Micus and Wu Tang Senior see me eating these black jelly beans. I better <laughs> hide them in my shame drawer. <laughs> <laughs> Big Jim like, and Tony. I like that your your dad had like like porno mags and black jelly beans, like all the shameful things. <laughs> I, I I did find I did find some. So I have found a, a couple. I found a couple porno mags in there. Very cool. <laughs> Covered in the <laughs> Weiger coming in with a really gross. Very cool. <laughs> My dad didn't have any porno mags lying around. Yeah, I was always trying that was an either. exotic thing at, 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 at other kids' houses when their dad would have like a porno that you could find in their bureau. Or yeah, or that they were like like obviously you know not, like the right. like you, like the kid would like be like oh no my dad's magazines are all right there you know like like I I never saw or found anything weird in my house you know. I was at a friend. I've told this story before on the podcast. I'll just do it real quick. But we had I was at my friend's house in elementary school and he had an older brother. And the, his parents were literally going to a dinner party next door. So it was me and my friend. We were both eight. And then his older brother and his friend we were both like 13, 14. And so the parents are like, we're just going to leave you here. We're gonna, you can order some pizza. We're just going to go to this dinner party down the street uh, and, then, and leave you alone. And the second they walk out the door, the older brother's like, like all right, let's get dad's videos. And went and got like a like a VHS stack of just fucking hardcore pornography. And I'm eight years old, so I have no idea. Like he's just putting in a porno tape, and I'm watching this, and I have no I like. I'm I'm just going to f- like from zero for never even seen a boob to like full penetration, <laughs> and it was like seeing a new color. I was just like, I don't even know what I'm watching. This is yeah. so bu- wild. It was, but anyway, it was like it was like 2001 and space at the end of 2001 space odyssey. Yeah, I became star baby, and so we're watching this. <laughs> And but so okay so there's like there's like some straight sex but then also a good amount of guy guy stuff and there's like a lot like and there's like actually as I we're watching this there's a there's like a lot of like gay porn on these tapes and they're like swapping out, out putting in another one there's like gay porn they're fast forwarding it through it trying to find some straight scenes and the the way these kids the, I, the way I remember the older brother characterizing it, and this, by the way, this family, very, very Christian, hyper-Christian. At one point, the mom gave the son um, money to, like, take his rap tapes and sp- smash them with a hammer. So, like, like super-duper Christian. Wow. But, but the way they characterize it, as we're watching all this this series of gay porn uh, with an occasional straight scene mixed in, is uh, they were just like, like, ugh. Oh man, Dad's got so many bad ones. Why are we have to keep watching? All, why does Dad have all these bad ones? <laughs> Yikes. Anyway, I'd love to. I'd love to catch up with that family on a double. <laughs> Could yeah, you have okay. them on a double, please? We'll have them on, and then we'll have Ryan Whitney on another week. We'll just deal with both. <laughs> just both of I mean, me and Mitch's the, childhood the dub, trauma. The Doughboys doubles should be called just now settling scores. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Nick, I, I was gonna say quickly. Yes. I'm also, I'm, 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 I'm sniffling up a storm over here. One, allergies. Two, the cats are shedding. Nick, I just want to let everyone oh know if they hear me. They hear me. The cats are shedding left and right. There's, there's fucking fur everywhere. Um, but um, I just want to give an update and let you both know that my Billboard chart number one song is in the works. Wow. Okay. Good. I mean, mm-hmm. the time frame has elapsed, yeah. but uh, yeah, yeah, let's let's <laughs> let's. I, I'm happy to extend. I, I will give you. Hmm. I'm. I mean, I'm in for what did I say? Ten ten grand. I'm in for. Yeah. Yeah. You said you would match Weiger's ten grand. I'll, I'll match Weiger uh, happily, and you know what? I, I I'll extend as long as you need. 
because uh, I want this to happen. <laughs> I, I don't want to be the brakes on this at all. So yes, my 10 grand still is in the pot. And Hodgman, so, I will notice, has not ponied up a goddamn penny. Wow. Getting called out, Hodgman. Maybe Hodgman believes in me. We might, you know, we might get a that voicemail from Hodgman can't expressing be true. some support. <laughs> <laughs> So, so the the idea was, if I remember the terms of this, is that if Mitch, if you get a single of your own mm -hmm. creation on the Billboard Hot 100, whatever whatever Billboard chart you yeah. want to get on, uh, that that we will give you. And this is this is not like this is a trivial Mitt Romney amount of money. This is just how implausible I think it will be for you to uh, to to get on this chart. But if you achieve that, that we will each pitch in ten grand. It started yes. as you said you could do it within a year. Yes. That yes. year has now elapsed. <laughs> there was some so, time. So you have failed. Let's let's just say you have failed. But I'm willing to say I will give you unlimited time. If you can chart a song, I will give you ten thousand dollars in cash. <laughs> In, I would not in singles. I want I will make singles. it. I'll make it rain on you, Mitch. Like we're <laughs> at the like like we're at the uh, the what was it? The Golden Apple on Route One. What was the what was the what was the strip club in on Route One called? That's that sounds about right to me. I, Route oh, One. Oh, the was, bananas uh, place. What's the bananas? Dancing bananas or something? Oh, what's that? Oh, the golden. Oh, the golden, golden banana. Banana? Was that it? Maybe it was called the Golden Banana. That's maybe what it was. It might have been the golden banana. That's yeah. what I that's that's okay. that's what I okay. was thinking. Um, yeah, golden banana is 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 twenty seven reviews on a uh, on, wow. on Yelp, and all of them are from you somehow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, and they're uh, all I've reviews of their wings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a co there's a COVID warning up top. Uh, oh man, this is this is this is there's some funny reviews on here. Um, <laughs> I I started talking to Anthony Tufo, uh, one of the Tufo brothers. Yes, one of your and childhood we're, friends. We're, and uh, I'm also collaborating with Jeff Dutton. I'm working with a couple different people. I love it. Uh, and, Nothing um, makes me happier than to know you're hard at work. You've got all this quarantine time. There's there's, I think the the first song that we're working on. I think uh, Zooks. I think you'll like it. I think it's kind of. Um, a throwback, maybe a little, uh, like, uh, maybe kind of close to uh, the song More Than Words by Extreme, maybe something similar to <laughs> oh, that. I, oh, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> an acoustic, an acoustic ballad, please. An acoustic ballad is maybe the, will, will maybe be the first song. Oh, I love it. It's going to be about four tracks, Wiger, is my plan. I want to do four tracks. I like it. I like Mitch. Put out an EP with mm -hmm. a lead single. Like, I will buy this. You're, you can make money. This is a way to make people will buy this if you put it on the streaming services. If you make real songs, people I will buy it. Absolutely. I have a I I have a feeling we're gonna I think we're gonna I think we're gonna chart. I think it's gonna happen. All right. I love I fucking I, dare you. I I'm fucking <laughs> dare you. I'm just excited to see you make an effort. Cause as far as I know, that year went by without you even trying. But now you got four four irons in the fire. So hopefully one of these will chart for you. I would love to it's see gonna it. happen. I need to be out the. I need to be out the ten G's, but I'd love to see it. I would love it if Mitch released an album and it was like great, and everybody was so excited about it, and everybody was downloading it, and blah blah blah, and and, and it was like a success. But then I would love it if like one of those like David Guetta or Tiesto or somebody took the vocals and made like an EDM hit out of one of Mitch's songs. <laughs> Like just took the vocal track and just turned it into and like charted, charted with that. Like one of those. Like like let's get let's get Mitch's like vocal tracks out to like like DJs. That's that counts, right? That counts if if, that, if a song Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. If you chart, if wow. you chart, if it's even if it's featuring Mike Mitchell, it works. Yeah, I'll give you a feature. The um. By the way, the the uh, the golden banana um. Uh, there a lot of the reviews. I was just reading a review where by one guy who's like, "The woman don't even want to be here." That's like his, <laughs> that was his issue. Was it was it during COVID? <laughs> the woman don't want to. The women don't want to be here, and they don't want to give me a lap dance because I'm coughing too much. <laughs> I feel like you could leave that review at a lot of workplaces. A lot of people don't want to be at work. It's not That's pleasant. True. 
We love being here, though. <laughs> oh, my, man, the ba- greatest place on earth, the Doughboy Studio. By the way, having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> so, or Ida Potatoes uh, uh, and uh, uh, Zooks, you talked about how you eat a lot of meals outside of the house, but do you ever have frozen meals at home? Never. This is never. like wow. never. Like you guys wow. talking about Tombstone Pizza, like never. That's not one of my moves. Um, so this was like all new to me, making like, you know, uh, fries out of the, I mean, I'm sure I did it as a kid or whatever. We had that stuff, but like, no, I'm not like a frozen burritos, frozen pizzas. Like I don't, uh, none of that stuff. So this was totally new. Yeah. I haven't had frozen fries specifically since childhood. That would be a thing. That would be a, you know, my dad would like make burgers in the backyard and throw some fries in the oven. Exactly. That's, that's the, that's my last memory of it. Although I've I've certainly eaten, certainly eaten my share of fries over the course of my life. So the ones I got, I got the, I went to the, the Ralph's, which is, which you may know as Kroger, depending on where you are in the country. I got some golden crinkles, which are crinkle cut Mm. fries. And they are characterized as the top selling frozen fry in the U S I also got the uh, the extra crispy fast food fries, which are are a uh, a very skinny fry. I also got those. I did not get the first one you mentioned. And then I got some um, some golden tater tots, as we mentioned. They they created tater tots, and I also got some hash brown potatoes, some shredded hash browns. They have a few different varietals of that. Oh, interesting. Uh, but what what did you? I, I guess uh, let, let's 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 begin with a rundown of what you guys got. Jason, you you mentioned you got the extra crispy fast food fries. I also what else? got the extra crispy golden fries. I got golden steak fries, and I got also the golden tater tots. So two of the same that you had, except I had steak fries and you had the uh, shredded ones. What's your normal go to for a fry? What's your how do you what, what's your favorite fry type? My oh, that's such a good question. My favorite fry type is probably um, more in line with what the fast food fry is that we Got had. It. You know, like the like um, like a, uh, a, a a thin. What's that called normally? Uh, I I think just like a normal fry, not not like a shoestring uh, or a haystack fry, but just like no, a, a default like normal, fry. like like McDonald's fries, whatever yes, that yeah. ar- whatever that archetype cut is, is what I prefer. Um, yeah, I, a think, freedom I think fry. that is a standard cut. A freedom, yeah, yeah, freedom what we fry, call, thank what you. What we call America's fry. Um, <laughs> when, we, when we got from out from under the tyranny of the British and their fries, their, uh, you know. Uh, chips. Um, their, their goddamn the chips. chips. Um, fucking confusing. Um, I, like, uh, I like that. My, I like my mom used to make these fries that were, I don't even know what they're called, but she would just slice a potato into like rings and fry mm. those and they were oh, like yeah. you know not thin like chips but a little thicker and those were like the best when i was a kid like that was my favorite thing those to me were ho- those were basically the at home version of home fries were, were that's basically what, that's what, what i, I think home fries yeah i like i like that um i don't i will say this on the record and i don't want to start too quickly jumping in on what we're doing cuz we haven't even heard what mitch got but like I do not traditionally like steak fries, which we got. Mm. Um, or, or for that matter, I don't like tater tots. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's a huge one. Huge yeah. reveal. Huge reveal. I didn't, I, I went before, why? Because I went before you and I didn't get tater tots because I thought we were just doing fries. And I, and I do, and, and look, I understand now that we're doing all Oreida. Oreida. But I, but in my mind, I was like, we're just doing fries. This is oven fries. We're doing oven right. fries, and so I didn't touch any. And I, I don't classify them as the same thing. I put hash, I put hash browns and and uh, and home, and tater tots in different categories. I know that I know that they're very similar, but I, I didn't. So I didn't touch any of those. Uh, but I did get, I got zesty curly fries, hmm. uh, zest, zesty straight fries. Which uh, the package was open, by the way. We'll, I'll get to that in a minute. Oh boy, Ooh. I got the restaurant fries. I got and I got a uh, uh, steak fries. Is that was it five? Oh, and I got the golden crinkle cut as well. Oh, wow. So I I had the I, I couldn't find any of the seasoned ones. I was hoping to have a zesty, mm. but they they weren't available in my freezer aisle. So all the ones I got were unseasoned, and they were they really are unseasoned. I mean, they just have no added salt or anything. They're pretty plain, which I guess if you're on a low sodium diet is is friendly. But you re- I would I would advocate if you are making these at home, really salting them up because 
uh, that otherwise they just don't have a lot of flavor. I'll, I'll start with the one you guys didn't get, which was the shredded hash brown potatoes, which I had this morning with breakfast and I felt like was the weakest entry. So these are the ones that you are supposed to, of all of them, the, the other ones all have a variety of different preparation methods you can opt for. The shredded hash brown potatoes you have to make on the stovetop. That's the only way. You make them on the stovetop with a little bit of oil. And um, I, I thought they were fine. You know, they were a little bit, uh, uh, it, it, it's, it's uh, when they, they crisped up nicely with just like a little bit of oil you put in the pan. And then basically the way they advocated it was kind of like making potato pancake. You put it all in one layer, cook it for five minutes, and then flip it over, uh, try to keep it as one piece, which worked okay uh, with these uh, with the texture of these frozen fries. Um, and, and ultimately the, the issue is they just didn't have a lot of inherent flavor. And the, yeah. the only thing that the, like the texture was there only the, the texture that you got from crisping them up in the pan was the only saving grace. But a, as such, I was just like, I don't, this doesn't feel like this is worth the calories to me. I, I don't know why I would have these. Uh, and, and also like, it's yeah, pretty easy to make I, home I, fries from scratch. Yeah. Go on. I got to ask, did you, add, did you add any uh, binding agents or no? I just use a little. I just use a little bit of of avocado oil, which was the oil I had on hand. So no, I didn't. I mean, I use like a tablespoon of cum. But, sure. Okay. Yeah, but I mean that's like that's like most of my cooking. Um, I, I had them as part of a complete breakfast with some some you know with some eggs and some some strawberries on the side. But I, I just like I didn't I didn't love these. You call it Weigergy, right? <laughs> Yeah, you can just prepare it in a batch, keep it in, <laughs> keep it in the cupboard. Sell it at a farmer's market. <laughs> <laughs> let's oh, let's God. move on to let's move on to the <laughs> uh, to the oven fries side of things. So the golden crinkles, I think either those are the tater tots. Honestly, probably the tater tots were my favorite of the bunch. But the golden crinkles, I felt like were the superior fry, and I was surprised because I expected the extra crispy fast food fries to outperform them. But the issue issue is the extra crispy fast food fries were just a little bit uh, insubstantial, Too crispy. and I feel like all I was getting was crunch from them. And I followed like I, with all these, I just like I'm doing exactly what the what the uh, the box tells me. I'm following the bag's ingredients to the letter to try to get an accurate representation of these. Nick, you know what I thought the issue was? Yes, they were roasted, toasted, and burnt to a crisp. Those little fries. It's true. Yeah, I felt like it was just eating like sticks. Like it was just it was like almost like I was eating something out of a uh, uh, like like a, a, a fucking like those fries you get in a bag or you get in a like those handicap fries. That's what I felt like I was eating. Just heat it up. I'm going to here's the thing. I These were of my three. My favorite. Wow. Wow. And not that they were like mind blowing or anything like that, but just of the three that I had, I would choose to have these. Maybe because the way I did them, they I made I put them in for the time it said, and they were still a little droopy. Mm, so yeah. I I put them back in for another like four minutes, and they came out really. And you're right, it is the the focus is on crispy, um, but they were they were still to me if I was gonna have them to accompany. A, a sandwich or a burger or something, and I had those the three options I had, I would have chosen those a hundred percent. Wow, yeah, wow, not that they were great, uh, but that uh, but that's how much I disliked the steak fries and the tater tots. Wow, wow, so you disliked both of those. what 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 wasn't working there with uh, with those two? Here's items? my problem with steak fries macro. I don't like steak fries because yes. the middle, it's so hard to get a fry that thick done well so i find that the middle is always mushy you know like i'm, it's, I'm mostly with you yeah it, it, like even if i'm having a steak with fries i'd prefer not to have steak fries i'd rather have a more oh, conventional cut fry a hundred percent i think it's really hard to do a, a good steak fry and have it yeah. have that crisp have it have that have it have that outer layer and not have it be overwhelmed by a starchy kind of like middle mush, which I feel like is what these were. These, like the middle of these thick steak cut fries were just kind of mushy. And yeah. and I put them back in, I tried to cook them more, tried to make them crispier. And it really just, I couldn't get out of it what I want out of that type of a fry, you know? Yes. Steak fries almost uh, never satisfying. I um I agree with you. He, 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 and, and I gotta say this, I think that, 
Orida is it's they're they're the king of oven fries, Nick. They're the they are the king of oven it's fries. True. They they're in and, and I think that a lot of the times, like you mentioned the hash browns and the tater tots. And for me growing up, it was just the place that did them. And it it wasn't always the best taste, but like if you if you if you dazzle up your uh your your hash browns, you can make them taste pretty good. And it it's kind of like, oh, this is this fills the need for 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 fries that you can make at home. The sta- I think that the reason that steak fries have a bad rap is because of Orida or- or steak fries. There was like a wave of nostalgia mm. that came back to me as I was making these. Because one, you should have to flip them halfway through, which isn't explicitly stated on the bag that you have it to is. flip them. In, in, is fact, it? in fact, it is, yes. <laughs> Wait, you're telling me that Mitch didn't read all of something? I'm about to blow your mind, Mitch, um, because there are, I'm not going to lie, four, four instructions. I fucked up. I thought that there, look, but I also, I also, I also remember as a kid. Heat, heat for 18 to 23 minutes, flip halfway through cooking time. Mm, wow. Wow. I mean, like, it's like the second sentence. <laughs> I, I, like- I got to tell you, it's always rule number two that always slips by <laughs> me. <laughs> um, I did flip them anyways, but here's the thing. I remembered as a kid that whole process of putting these in there, then having to flip them, and then all for what? It was not even worth it. You know what I mean? In the end, I agree with you that steak fries can be great. They just have to be very well done. They're very yes. hard to do. They have to be very crispy. I think it's not a home-based thing. You have to be in like right. a real in, like I would order steak fries at a steakhouse because I'm like these guys they're going to do it right, you know? Yes. I would never m- choose to at home do steak fries ever. Certainly without access to a deep fryer or something. When 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 I when when steak fries are when steak fries are done right, yeah. They can be S tier. They can be an S tier fry. Mm. I think I, I disagree these, with you. These, these are just these were a different kind of S tier. Oh boy! If you catch my drift. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. I can I can complete that 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 S word. I, I will say that I Semen. feel like steak fries. <laughs> Semen tier. Wait, that's what you were thinking? Wait, is that is that good or bad? Yeah, where is that rank? <laughs> like, like, is that better? It's, worse? It's above S tier. <laughs> oh wow! Okay. <laughs> shit tier, Weiger. I meant shit, shit. tier. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. I th- I think the I think the ceiling for even a well done steak fry for me is a little bit lower just because I don't like all that potatoy uh, uh, you know like like uh, for me if it's gonna get that but, starchy that potatoy I'd rather have a different potato preparation but altogether. already already you're already saying a bad steak fry you're 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 you're, yeah. you're, you're negating a good steak fry if it's potatoy yes. like that it's not a good steak fry and these Orida fries like they not only does it do they clump up and they taste potatoy but they also taste like freezer they taste like a free you can taste like the frozen potato that's a big issue i don't think i think without deep frying them you cannot cook the middle of the steak fries without yes ruining the exterior yeah if, if you're oven doing steak fr- frozen steak fries i think it makes mm-hmm. the exterior hard to get the middle to do anything and otherwise you have a kind of crispy exterior and then like a mushy, not quite, just like warmish interior. One hundred percent. And so, yeah, I mean, and I didn't even have the Orida steak fries, but I will say that that the issue I had, although I I like the Golden Creekles quite a bit, and I like the the tater tots even more. The issue I had with both of those, as well as in particular the hash browns, is you do get that freezery taste that you mentioned, Mitch. You do get kind of get some freezer burn. Um, and, uh, and especially anything that's not like thoroughly crisped up. Uh, but I, I, the tater tots, I like, I, it was just like, oh, you know, this is a little bite of childhood. This is that, that nostalgic. Hmm. This is that, what's it? This is like a hoodsie or, you know, like, this is that sort of thing. Like I'm biting in this. I'm like, oh, I like this. I like this in the same way that I'd like these from a cafeteria when I was a kid. Uh, and the, the, they were, you know, I, I've, I've certainly had better, better tater tots in my life, but they were, they were quite good. Uh, they they were quite comforting and and I think they had a great texture and and flavor to them when I salted them up a little bit. And the Golden Crinkle, similarly, they were just like, oh, these are good. They're not like a like a Shake Shack or a Del Taco crinkle cut fries. That's 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 great. But these were uh, these were fine. I thought they were totally fine. Nick, you told me that sometimes you'll revisit your elementary school and you'll put on a spinny cap and you'll try to go in there and get yourself <laughs> some tater tots. <laughs> 
<laughs> and you call, you said you you almost called them bader tots. Is that like <laughs> is that a is that a thing where you like the masturbate masturbate yeah. for tots? <laughs> It's a fundraiser I got every year. Bader. It's yeah, not we got to support. I did Weiger ask you to do his Bader Tots thing? I don't get it. <laughs> Bader Bader Tots sounds like like the fifth member of the 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 comedians of com- who who are the 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 comedians of comedy? What were they called? Oh, do you mean the uh, the where, the blue collar comedy tour? Yeah, the blue yeah. Oh, Bader oh, Tots. Yeah. Ba- Bader Tot sounds like the fifth member of the Blue Collar Comedy he's opening Tour. For, he's opening for Jeff Dunham right now. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Bader Tot in the loudest cheer you could ever imagine. Because those comedy tours are still selling out right now. Because <laughs> listen, guys, puppets can't get the disease. It's true. Puppets can't get viruses. You're safe to see Terry Faye tour, uh, but a lot of the acts can't tour right now. Well, actually, there was there was yes. an article that that this is true. There was an article that coronavirus is in semen. Yes. So Jeff Dunham's dummies are probably in trouble. <laughs> you think they've got it? You're saying Dunham is fucking peanut? You think they've got it? You think Dunham is railing Walter? <laughs> Just giving it to the jalapeno? I'll be 100% honest. After two months alone in my house, if there were puppets here, I mean, I'd be giving it a thought. At some point, yeah, at some point, Dunham is just starting to see feel heart eyes towards Ahmed the dead terrorist because he's got no other companionship. He's like, we just never understood each other. <laughs> So, Mitch, what what other what other fries did you have? Uh, you'd mentioned the zesty ones. How did the zesty ones stack up? So, I got the zesty. And the so number one for me was golden uh, crinkle crinkle cut. Um, oh wait, I'm sorry, that's not true. I just look. I'm looking at my rank again. My okay. number one was my number one was zesty curly. Wow. Um, and what is the zest? The ze- it's basically like a like spicy like a okay. spicy fry like the whatever that coating is. Sure. Okay. So, akin to like an Arby's fries or a Jack in the Box yes. fries. Got and it. And what is that coating like a Cajun y kind of? I know salty, what you mean. Whatever. Yeah. It is. I, yeah, yeah. I imagine some chili powder, some paprika, some cayenne, mm-hmm. just a, a few different a different spice blend. It's like a Lowry season salt. My thing with the, so, I'll tell you this, I. Uh, I ordered an air fryer specifically for this episode. Wow. Whoa. And it didn't and it didn't come in time. <laughs> oh my god. It's 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 arriving today. Wow. Oh what a bummer. I know. I was cuz I really wanted to I really wanted to try it that way, but I Nick, I I put the oven up to 450. Like I always tell my ma to do. <laughs> right? So it'll crisp up. Ma, put it to 450. You know the bit. <laughs> we know the bit. I got to eat fries. I'm drinking peppermint schnapps tonight <laughs> with the O'Brien sisters. <laughs> Maybe we can scoop. I need a full stomach, Ma. <laughs> I got to get I got to get half biffed and scoop it out. <laughs> Ma, half biffed don't and come scoop no it peaking. Out. No peaking, Ma. I'm half biffed and I'm trying to scoop it out. I'm trying to scoop it. Ma, I'm trying to scoop, Ma. She's like, no peaking. I'm trying to scoop it. Ma, you're ruining my scoop. We told Weiger that scoop, uh, the scoop, when you were, no one uses it as an adult, but when you were younger, scooping meant making out. I think specifically using tongue. Um, yeah, weird. I'd never heard that before. I have a friend named Scoop, so it made it even right. more confusing. Because um, he was the makeout king, right? <laughs> yes, he was the makeout king. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> uh, we were making out with Jeff Dunham's dummies. There was <laughs> <laughs> the O'Brien sisters hung out with us too. Um, and they and they were they were puppets. <laughs> they were puppets. <laughs> they were they were uh, Irish puppets. <laughs> Ma, I got the O'Brien's just down here. Michael, they're they're dummies. Stop <laughs> playing with your puppets. It's just like red red yarn on a couple of old cum filled socks. Ah, <laughs> uh, that poor lady. Um, 
Zesty Curly, I think, is the right. It's just the. It's kind of like the right amount of not perfect amount of thick, but it's just the perfect. Right. It like a. I said perfect still. It's just when you put them in the oven, they don't overcook and they don't undercook. It's right there. They 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 got a, they got a nice. They, they are. They're the Goldilocks fries for sure. They're the Goldilocks fr- fries of this entire thing. The seasoning is on there, so if there is any kind of freezer taste, you don't taste it. There, the, the the zesty curly is really good. I, I like. I like genuinely was was a good fry. Toss those in the oven, wise. You'd be happy. Second for me was golden cut the golden crinkle cut fry. That that's the best of the non uh, zest flavors. Then third, I had zesty straight. Um, they were, and I think that they were opened, but they were still good. You know, they were open, but I thought, I'm just going to go for it. You know Wait, what I mean? They were opened and you ate them? How open? Yeah. That's like like a, like a quarter of an inch ripped open or like opened open? It was like it was like this much of the of the bag at the top was opened. Like that's that an inch. Sense? Yeah. That's an yeah. inch. That's too much. <laughs> now, it could have been me jamming them into the freezer, and that's kind of why I was like, oh, I'll just go for it. Oh, you know, you, you, you gotta, oh you it gotta, might have popped or something. Yeah, you got to soldier through with some of this stuff. So, I, I, you know, like when someone sent us a drink or stank that was just in an unmarked bottle that he filled up his stuff, I was ready to drink it. You should, yeah. I, I, all Poor the time there. on the show, I am shouting at you guys <laughs> while I'm listening, do not eat things or drink things that your fans give you. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with Jason. This is a recipe. You've eaten so much of your fans come. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Put, us, put me down with a with a with a plate of it and a fork and knife, and I'll eat it still. Because I love <laughs> good God, I love the fans, Weiger. <laughs> <laughs> I think if it's in a sealed container, I'm okay with it. But when you what know, does a sealed getting, container mean? Like if I like I mean like if it's an unopened bag or an unopened box or like a can. Oh, like a like product. Sort of like, yeah, a someone's pro- giving us oh, a product. Yeah. Oh no no no. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. fine. I'm talking about homemade. You guys eat stuff that people make for you and bring to your live shows. Like it's like a normal thing. No, but if somebody gives you like a sealed bag of chips, absolutely yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, I'm generally yeah. not skittish about that. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, guys, come on. <laughs> if you send a vacuum packed bag of semen, Weiger will 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 take it down, but not if it's he'll loose. Use, right. He'll use it as a binder. <laughs> <laughs> a Weiger binder. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? What was on your trapper keeper as a boy? Um, I'm trying to remember. I think I went playing a lot of years. Oh God, that is just that. I mean, of course he did. Yeah, Why I don't know if I had any, anything in particular. I had a peachy folder at some point. Remember peachy? Was that a was that a thing for you? No. no. What is peachy? Peachy had like a different athlete. So it was like a Wheaties box version of a folder. Had like a sports hmm. guy and a and a but generic, just like a generic football man. Hmm. But I had those. Those are pretty cool. But yeah, I think I think generally I wasn't doing anything too exotic with my trapper keepers. All right. Um, I didn't have anything. I'm a little older than you guys, so like, I didn't really have things that had pictures on them. Everything was very plain. Right. And then it was really like you got your school books and you covered them in brown shopping bag. I remember that. Yes. And then it was all about drawing on yeah. them or having your friends who were better artists wow. draw on them or whatever. A stop and shop bag. Absolutely. You, you take a st- brown paper stop and shop bag. Do they yep. still cover books like that? I wonder. I, yeah, I don't know if we have any current uh, middle or elementary school listeners uh, hit us up. Let us know <laughs> on social media. Do you cover your book with brown paper shopping bags? I bet not because we barely even have brown paper shopping bags or books. Really? Yeah. Or school. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> or school. That's true. Right now. That's true. Like we, we have none of these things now. <laughs> <laughs> They probably cover up their iPads with fucking paper. These- I would be curious um, to find out the age demographic of the Doughboys listeners. So maybe mm. hashtag, uh, uh, you know, under teens, hashtag over teens, something like uh, how many how many young people are listening to Doughboys? I really wonder. Please don't at me with a hashtag under teens. That's like <laughs> just just straight to Weiger hashtag <laughs> under teens. I would say I'll, I'll say this if. If you're breaking it down by life expectancy, I'd say that most of our listeners are in the twilight years. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how old they are. <laughs> uh, Mitch, we should uh, get to our... Yeah, get, yes, please finish uh, the, 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 we should get the, to our final the, thoughts. 
Then restaurant fries, then steak fries were my final. Restaurant fries, like I said, roasted, toasted, burnt to a crisp. Steak fries, we talked about. They have those issues. Set a bad example for uh, for for steak fries for the rest of the world. So, so uh, we should get to our final thoughts on or Ida potatoes from the freezer aisle, and uh, we will go. So we'll go around. We'll give a rating from zero to five forks, uh, following our closing argument on this uh, this particular brand. Uh, Jason, you are our guest. We will begin with you. Okay, so it's tough because I don't. I'm. I want to only compare these to my expectations, I guess, for frozen fries. Mm. Like, I shouldn't be comparing these to restaurant fries or my expectations for, like, a uh, restaurant, right? Something that I would get out of a deep fryer or whatever. So I had the three that I mentioned. My choices were extra crisp uh, fast food fries were number one. Number two were tater tots, which I don't love. Mostly texture-based is not is what I don't like mm. about tater tots. It's like a texture I don't like. It feels right. like little starch bits. I don't know. And then steak fries. They, 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 they have the same issue as the steak. They definitely have that freezer taste a lot of the time. And, and yeah, and they also have that, like, the outside gets crispy, but the interior feels, like, mealy or something. Like, just not quite. Maybe I just didn't do it right or, you know, I don't know. Like, I just couldn't get the consistency inside and outside to be what I wanted. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, so the shoestring, or not the shoestring, the the whatever, Extra crispy ones, but though I, I, I would eat those. The, this was not like a, I would not be excited if I was like making burgers at home. I would rather like make a baked potato yeah. than any of these fries. Really, you know what I mean? Like if I'm looking for a starch or something like that, mm, none yeah. of these really, maybe the, you know, maybe what Mitch you're describing with the, um, the, um, crinkly ones or maybe there's a better iteration of it that i would like more but none of these would i like go to or be excited about so for me this was unsatisfying interesting but unsatisfying in a way that was like i would not be thrilled to make these would would i eat them sure did i eat them for lunch today absolutely i had a very (laughs) a very starchy lunch but but i also don't think they're like bad or right. gross or they're not like ugh, trash or anything like that they're just the expectations are met they are just disappointing i guess um so i'm gonna go kind of middle i'm gonna go 2.5 forks wow 2.5 forks two forks two times from jason Matsukas. uh go ahead mitch well i guess you're only as good as your as as your worst fry right but also are you as Good as your best fry, Nick? Mm. Wow. I guess that's this the is question. A, this is a real Zen Koan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, the steak fries aren't great. The the restaurant uh, even the restaurant fries were my 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 second to last choice. But even those, I still in, enjoyed. They were roasted, toasted, burnt to a crisp, like I said. But still, still pretty good. I thought that the the golden and zesty curly were pretty great for fries that you're baking in the oven at 450 with your ma hanging over your shoulder. Um, <laughs> Making sure you don't burn yourself. <laughs> I could see Mitch just trying to reach in with his bare hands to pull the tray out. And his, his mom having to be like, whoa, 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 get some potholders. <laughs> this is now, too, or this is back in the day? No, this is now. <laughs> By the way, you can spell bare hands either way when referring to Mitch. Yeah. God damn it. You got them big, meaty have... paws. I know. It doesn't help with other things. Um <laughs> And they're I want to covered say that I, with fur. <laughs> <laughs> the cats are shedding right now. That's why. <laughs> I added salt, Nick. I, I I took some kosher salt, sprinkled it over the fries, and um and I used Heinz ketchup, which of course you know I did as well. That's the S tier ketchup. You know, there's nothing that be, right. Is, is there anything that beats Heinz, Nick? Yeah, I love Heinz. Give me Heinz over go. any any places, any gastro pubs house ketchup any day any day. Of the if, week. if you even try. And give me hunts, I will fuck you up. 
If you're like, <laughs> if I say, can I get some ketchup and you hand me hunts, I will straight up punch you in the throat and walk out. <laughs> I agree. That is Z. You, you, I, this is why we bond. We have that Massachusetts thing in us. <laughs> that instant escalation to physical violence. <laughs> Immediate. Immediate. <laughs> needless. The slightest provocation. Oh, yeah. It's on. Hunt thinks it's better than Heinz? What, does Hunt think it's fucking better than Heinz? <laughs> you better back off, Hunt. <laughs> Trust me, I went to school for a year with a bunch of Hunts. A bunch of Hunts. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, yeah. I think that we, we brought up the black jelly bean conversation earlier, and I think that there's actually kind of something similar here where these steak fries were like the first like attempt at frozen fries, it feels like. These, these Oreida mm. or Oreida steak fries were like the first attempt at fries, and they're not good. They're not great. People still buy them, obviously, but they're not. You taste the, you taste the freezer burn. You, t- you taste the clumpy potatoes. They're not good. The zesty curly fries are great, and I really wonder how they'll taste uh, in that air fryer when it comes, and if, if that will make any difference. I mean, honestly, all of them. I, I really, the the technology has gotten better. You don't have to heat up the oven to four fifty, which is too hot, by the way, far too hot. Nick, my my kitchen was 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 smoldering. Mm. The oven door was open. Well, that was the issue. It should it shouldn't have been. Yeah. <laughs> That was your problem right there. Yeah, I mean, you've done in that case, you've done a number of things wrong. <laughs> but if it, the oven door is not open, how am I supposed to watch them cook up? It looks good. <laughs> it's like Mitch sitting in his kitchen be like, this show sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even see him cook. <laughs> the nostalgia factor for me, this is like one of the things that I feel like young kids are able to cook on their own, like, Elio's Pizza or Elio's, as we were corrected. I was, I was, I was a big Elio's, and I also called it Elio's. Elio's Pizza Kid. Yeah. Wow. There, that, that this and like putting fries in the oven when you're taking a home home ec class when you're in sixth grade or whatever. This is these are the things you go to first. These so there is a nostalgia thing here, but I will say for a frozen fry that you cook in the oven, the zesty and golden crinkle cuts are four fork fries. Wow. And that's you know what I'm gonna go with the best and say four forks, Nick, because wow, the best of the best. I don't have to get the I don't have to get the I don't have to get the worst ones. You know what I mean? Toss them out. That's a frozen fr- plate club level ranking. Although we know it won't be eligible based off of our guests. No score. one, and also just to be clear, no one has made it into the golden plate club yet. Frozen plate club, yes. You you have you've booted Tombstone yes, out because you retconned Tombstone <laughs> in an amateur effort to get them to send you free pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that you were so butthurt that they sent it to Griffin and not you. <laughs> That's what this is all about. This is just grievance. This is not. This is. This is. It's messed up. That you know what? Even if they send me free frozen pizza, which they should, I don't think I'll change my score. Wow. So do you? Th- are you saying that quarantine doughboys can be bought? <laughs> no, we can never be bought. Yeah, never doughboys be can't bought. be bought. Okay, good. But still. I like to get my little ass kissed, Nick. <laughs> Ew. This is really Ew. gross. Yeah. <laughs> so I got the, uh, I'll just say, uh, there, there's, there's not a reason for me to ever have these again. Wow. There's just no situation where I'd be like, I want to have fries in my freezer that I can heat up in my oven. I think absent a home frying apparatus, which I do not want to have because that would be dangerous for me. I don't see any justification for ever buying these. I I would I like you know, to to Zook's point about he'd rather have something else. He'd rather have a baked potato. I'd rather have if I'm if I'm making some burgers at home or something. Give me honestly, give me Ruffles chips. Give me like just potato chips out of a bag, or yes. give me or give me potato salad. I'll make some potato salad, and, I, and I'll prefer that to any of these oven fries. That said. Mm. 
I think the tater tots were pretty good. Uh, the crinkles I also liked. The fast food fries, uh, hash brown potatoes I could take or leave. Uh, just still categorizing these as a frozen fry, uh, seeing how this brand is uh, able, uh, how this brand uh, achieves what it is attempting to do. For me, this puts it right at that three fork threshold mm. because I think it's just right down the middle. And that 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 yes, this is what you'd want if you want this, but this is not something that I personally want. And hey, that's our review of Or Ida as Doughboy's topical freeze continues. It's time for a segment. And hey, it's the return of a beloved one. I've chosen a pie, and Mitch and Jason must divine a series of clues to guess what it is. The winner gets an IOU for a pie. The loser goes home empty-stomached. This is another edition of Pie in This Guy. I started singing pie, pie, which one is in this guy? Baked a pastry that was tasty, but a mystery which kind? And Mitch and Matsuk is giving it their best try. Guessing this will be the type of this pie. This will be the type of this pie. A little low on the range with that last note there. Crushed it. Breaking news. Yeah. Dom McLean dead. He jumped off a bridge. Wow. <laughs> the tragedy. He 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 left the he 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 has rescinded his American citizenship. <laughs> 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 so you'll take turns getting increasingly more obvious clues. There are two lifelines. One, you can ask Emma for her opinion. Okay. And second one, we normally do the smell test, but because of the remote record setup, we will be doing an eye test. I will screen share a close-up photo of the pie, and you can glean from that whatever you choose. Wow. Uh, and uh, Jason, you are a guest. You get to choose if you want to go first or second. I will go second. Okay. So Mitch, you will start with the least obvious the most obscure clue the most obtuse one you made a good choice zooks all right yeah. let's do it oh I, I i i'm a fan guys i know i know how to <laughs> i know how to play your games <laughs> mitch here is your clue yeah if you want to find this pie in the wild go a little south of the mason dixon line if you want to find this pie in the wild go a little south a little of the mason dixon line Hmm. Wild blackberry pie. Okay, so you took wild very literally there. Uh, it is not wild blackberry pie. Do you know what the you know the Mason Dixon line, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> what is it? I dare never step over it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this next clue is for Jason. Uh, remember, you do have two lifelines, Ask Emma and the eye test, which you can use at any point. Okay. Uh, Jason, your clue. Not eating this pie would be a real rook e move. Not eating this pie would be a real rook e move. Hmm. Jason okay. Is <clears throat> hmm. 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 Emma is thinking as well. Remember, you can you can ask I'm her gonna today. I'm gonna lifeline Emma here. Now, can Emma just say what pie she thinks it is, or does she and I get to talk about what we think about that clue? You guys can have a discussion. You can have a brief chit chat. I, I thought I knew what it was with the first clue, and now I have no idea that clue. I don't know what a rook is. I think I know. I think I know what it is. Weirdly, rook. Mm. My, I'm thinking rook might be referring to the chess piece, like a chess piece. Um. Which is a castle, I believe, right? Uh, uh sh yeah. Or is it the... That's the... The rook is the most... Co co nope. Mm. I'm not very good at chess. <laughs> South of the Mason Dixon... I'm... Wow. What do you think, Emma? Do you have any, any you want to... My guess was pecan pie. When, with the south of the Mason Dixon line. Wait, do you mean a no pecan pie? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, you get it. No pecan. <laughs> That's a t-shirt. But, um, but then this clue, I don't know. It didn't yeah. help or hurt, I guess. I don't so think I understand real it. Move. I'm going to say it's a... Ah, uh, boy. I'm just going to say it's a peach pie. Peach pie is incorrect. Okay, go ahead. Mitch, your clue. These are getting. Remember, you still have the eye test lifeline available. I, I think I think I know the answer, but go ahead. Let's do you want to hear the clue first, or do you want to take a guess? 
I mean, it's funnier if I don't even hear the clue. Okay, go ahead and go. If you're if you want to take a big swing and not hear the clue, I will read the clue after your guess anyway, so Jason can hear it if you are incorrect. I think maybe the issue here is the obscurity of the pie, Nick. Hmm. Um. Because in my mind, it's a classic chess pie. Mitch, is that your guess? Yes. You have one pie in this guy. Wow. I owe you one chess pie. What when is all this it? Shit... I don't even know what a chess pie is. I don't even know what is. that is. So this, is, this may be a regional thing, and I, you know, I didn't take into account that everyone here is from New England, but this is a big pie in the southern United States, a chess pie. A chess oh. pie is just a... Just a basically a sweet pastry pie uh, that that I believe is just flour, sugar, uh, eggs, which you obviously can't have. How dare you? Um, and uh, and uh, <laughs> I, I think it's like <laughs> I think it's basically that simple. It's just like a sweet, uh, sweet, uh, uh, almost cheese adjacent pie that is like that is beloved down south. And it's delicious. Kind of cheese. Can you show it? So I'll show the the close up photo that I have. Actually, you know what? Let me find a better photo of what, chest. What, Nick, pie. what was what was your, what was your third clue? The third clue is this pie, which also has lemon and chocolate varietals, puts your taste buds in check. Yeah. So another chess pie pun. So if you aren't aware of mm. a chess pie's existence, yeah. See, then I you knew it was chess related when you said rookie, but I just didn't know there was <laughs> such a thing as a chess pie. Literally. Yeah. I'll, I'll share a screen of this. This is the this is the first game of chess I've ever won. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> So you can get a get a look oh. at this pie here. Yeah, it's just it's just very very simple. And is that cheese? Are you saying that's cheese? It's not cheese. Is it like a cheese Danish type thing? Like yeah, sweet I think it's, savory it's akin thing? to a cheese Danish, but it doesn't actually have cheese in it. But I would I oh. think of it in terms of I think the the etymology is a, is some people think it's because of a southern pronunciation of cheese because it's a derivative of an of an English. Uh, type oh. of pie, but yeah, just just as far as uh, in addition to the crust, the filling is just eggs, butter, sugar, uh, cornmeal, and sometimes vanilla. So it's it's pretty pretty simple. Hmm. So Zooks, you were playing a game for a prize you couldn't win. No, I wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> you know, well, maybe I got an IOU for a safe pie. Maybe Weiger was trying to like secretly kill me by like <laughs> hoping I would win. <laughs> So that how did this get played would be the most prominent of the how did this get dot 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 in that podcast. Be a big smoking gun there if I <laughs> this is how I, I poisoned you. That was uh that was pie in the sky. It's uh, just like a restaurant of our feedback. Let's open up the feedback. Today's email comes from Caleb in Chicago. Caleb writes I'm a market researcher in the packaged food and beverage industry, and prior to my current role, spent years analyzing the food service industry. Prior to the pandemic, many in the restaurant industry were predicting the death of buffet chains. For instance, Ovation Brands, owners of Hometown Buffet, Old Country Buffet, and Ryan's Buffet, has filed for bankruptcy three times. Now, even more industry experts believe buffet chains won't survive the pandemic. Indeed, throwback soup and salad buffet chain soup plantation, which you may know as Sweet Tomatoes, depending on where you're in the country, announced it will permanently close all locations. RIP Soup Plantation Sweet Tomatoes. Two questions. One, what is your general opinion of buffet chains? And two, if you were the CEO of a buffet chain, what would you do to keep your chain alive? Uh, Jason, I wanted to add, I wanted to start here because obviously your your diet is pretty limited. Uh, are you someone who ever eats at a self service buffet, or is that too perilous? I would never. I would never eat in a buffet um, f for a few reasons. Right. One, I, 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 just from like a a germ level, I don't, I don't like it. You know, yeah. I don't like the I don't like the salad bar. I don't like a buffet. I don't mm. like a craft services table that has like just loose nuts and can't like a loose bowl <laughs> of fucking nuts that everybody is like digging their grubby hands in. No, yeah. I, I don't. I don't <laughs> understand. So buffets to me uh, are, are the same, like that kind of shared space. Everything's out in the open. The food is just out there. I'm a hard pass. Um, so I, I wouldn't go to those places to begin with. Um, and how do they, how do they manage to like survive this? I, I really have no idea. Like this is, this is going to decimate that kind of a business, I think. It's tricky unless you're someone who is just like denying reality for political partisan reasons where you're just like, I'm going to go to a buffet. I don't care that, you know, this, like, unless you're that type of person, I don't think that demographic is big enough to sustain a business certainly nationally maybe in some regions you can you can just get the people who are revolting against hygiene uh to come to your to, to, to your restaurant 
But I, I, my, my thought on that is I think you've got to switch to like the back to the cafeteria style service where you're not the person who's who's grabbing your own thing. You've got yes. a food service worker uh, behind a counter with glass who is, you know, Chipotle. People know Chipotle. It's that same sort of thing. They're, they're like, you want some baked beans? I'll give you some baked yeah. beans. They're kind of that prepping your plate sense. for you. That makes sense to me. But that's like, that's a different business model. Then yeah. then that means they're going to need a lot more people. They're going to, that's 100%. Like, like, how do you, like the kind of what's, like I suspect the, um, the the metrics for those kind of restaurants require that nobody really needs to be interfacing for the customer to experience the food really yeah versus for like sure. a chipotle or whatever there needs to be or any kind of construct your own there needs to be people there doing that job and you have to pay those people you know that's a great point because I, I and I never even think of I, I it, it should because it, it seems like a, it seems pretty obvious, but I never even think of the labor savings that a buffet. That's probably where most of their margin is that they, they just are like aside from just having low food quality. They just yeah they have to have fewer they workers. Need, they don't need that many people on the floor. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, I, I can I can I just say that that I'll just give my general buffet opinion is a uh, parallels uh, Jason's not just for hygiene reasons. Although that that is a thing that I've always had an issue with. It's just you'll just see someone reach their grubby hands in and grab a brownie or something barefisted. And I'm just like, that's that's gross. But also, it sounds like you're I, referring to me, both of you. When you <laughs> when you both say grubby hands, I just feel like I've lifted my hands up earlier. I just feel like you're I got gr- grubby like hands. grubby paws, like you know, like <laughs> g- grabbing around for like a, a fistful of peas. Yeah. <laughs> like you're snatching a salmon out of a stream uh, i i had the i will just say that i had my issue with buffets is that i get full quickly and natalie my lovely wife has a a voracious appetite despite being a very slender person okay, she's just someone who it, can just eat and eat and keep eat. it clean weiger <laughs> oh not sexually <laughs> certainly not for me is natalie's is natalie's dad slender man i had to ask <laughs> Your dad is not slender, man. I, but mm. she she can eat a lot, and I I get full after I'm like a one pump chump. But for buffets, like I have Jesus. one plate, and then I'm full, and then I never get my money's worth. I'm the sucker who keeps buffets profitable. Slash, you know, this the same thing. I'm the same thing at casinos. I put twenty bucks into a slot machine, and it's gone, and that's it. That's my whole experience with gambling. Just sounds like you're more of a fool than anything. Um, but also I gotta say, one pump chumps, it's efficiency, baby. <laughs> you got places to go. You have binding agent to make. Deficiency or efficiency? <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, Slenderman's asked that I kill in the name of him. So, uh, oh boy, oh boy, <laughs> Mitch, don't do that. Why? He told me to. You have a billboard hit to create, Mitch. You know, you know that like the last time that worked, Slenderman convinced twelve-year-olds to kill on his back. <laughs> so that means you have the mental capacity of twelve-year-olds. <laughs> I um Jason said he was a hard pass. I'm a hard go. I I um I did almost say hard on. I'm a hard go for buffets if they're good. I think that there mm. I think that there's just shitty bad buffets. What's a good one? I mean, I think that like there's like certain Indian buffets that Indian food buffets that are really really good and, sure, and things sure. like that that are that are that are that can be really fantastic. But rest in peace to Sweet Green slash uh, Soup Plantation. Is that what it's called? Sweet, oh, Sweet Tomatoes. Sweet Tomatoes. Yeah, Sweet Greens is its own chain. Jesus. Got to get the name right when I'm saying R.I.P. R.I.P. to, uh, to uh, Soup Plantation, um, which we gave an okay review to. But I know that there's a lot of people. Becca Weber, who worked on the Birthday Boy Show, she loves Soup Plantation. There's a lot of people who love that restaurant. It's now incredible value. Just an incredible value. Great value. And also, I like the idea of a buffet of like, oh, you can go up and you can pick around and do what you want to do, which I usually don't like. But since buffet, like I usually like to get served what I think I should they think I should be eating. Yes, but with buffets, with it's a different it, that, you know, going into a buffet, what you're what you're getting into and everything like that. But I saw a video the other day. Um, I think it was I think it was from China about how uh, the virus COVID could spread in a buffet or just any virus can spread in a, a buffet and it I was, know the video you're talking about I think you might be sent it Weiger this was a very this was a viral video in more ways than one. Oh boy the video I sent you Mitch that you were you were talking about it was the they were they were showing someone had paint 
uh, someone had put paint on their hands, and then they were showing that how easily that could be transmitted at a buffet with ten people. And by the end of it, like everyone had paint on their bodies, and some like three people had paint on their faces without even thinking about it. Wait, Weiger, why do you keep putting the word paint in air quotes? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I donated some paint to him. Wink. And and the way that they can tell is through a black light? Well, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that was weird that I should have known something as I when it said paint supplier Nick Weiger. Special thanks. <laughs> so I think that I think that buffets are gonna have issues going forward for sure. And I think that what you said is a pretty good idea, Weiger. I think because we we visited that when we were where were we when we were down south when we went to a couple Diners like the remember where we got some catfish and stuff like that. We went to a couple great uh like southern diners like that. We went to in Nashville, we went to a fantastic cafeteria, and I can't think of it off the top of my head. Like a it's classic not, meat like a meat and three kind of thing. Yeah, meat and three's yes. uh, meat and three's place in Nashville, and it was fantastic. And that that was that sort wasn't of thing. it some guy's name, Wagger? It was like some guy's name, wasn't it? Yeah, I'll see if I can find it right now. But it it was that sort of thing where it was, yeah, there there were people behind the counter and they'd ask you what you wanted and you paid for what you got. Arnold's maybe? Arnold's Country Kitchen? Does that sound right? I I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I I can see that as a model. That's I think that works. You know, as long as you have somebody else, as long as there's a controllable element so that you don't have one person after another picking up the same serving spoon or tongs or whatever it is. Like the frequency with which you see that, even at like, you know, the salad bar at, you know, the supermarket or whatever, you know, yeah. uh, or the Whole Foods or what, you know, those those shared bars where everybody's just using the same stuff. Is there now going to be disposable gloves for people to put on before they serve themselves right. from those things? Do those things go away entirely? All that, how we interface with food is going to have to change at a certain point. Yeah. Yeah. And also, instead of multiple gre- people grabbing the tongs, it will just be one or two sick people who work for the restaurant grabbing the tongs. Yeah, yes. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I, I agree. I, th- I think it's going to be uh, – I think that uh, – in, 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 in Zooks, you made a good point about how the, the cost efficiency for restaurants, how many people do you, and do you want – and like also – the thing with a buffet is that it's easy. You go up there. There's usually no line. You wait. Even when there's one person in front of you in a buffet, you're annoyed because you're like, I want to get the right. thing right now. And they're also not – like restaurants like that are are making food in bulk. They're not making it to order. They're not making yeah. it – they're mm-hmm. making – so even on that end of things, they are – they are – like their margin is in uh, in how much – in volume, not in individual people making individual dishes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's going gonna, gonna to be a tough road. Our IP to – and I'm, I'm sure that Soup Plantation thought this when they decided to – pull the plug i'm sure that they were already in, they were already in some trouble and then you know this happened it's like when when does this when can we get our business model going again when can we get back on the plantation is what what they're all asking <laughs> <laughs> yeah it might have been tired time to retire that brand name anyway it was That's a little a problematic point. maybe they come back like a, a, a phoenix rising out of with a with a new name uh any any other name <laughs> but 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 i think that i think that uh that you know, paying employees to maybe serve at buffets is probably worth the worth the cost for a lot of these places because you can maybe get people to come in if it's if it's a system like that. But yeah, well, Any, we'll see. I, I think it's going to initially be anything that makes people feel like they're safe to go in there. That's true. Really, you know, like that's going to be what it is. It's people are going to go where they think it's safe. You know, where they think they're the least likely to have some sort of you know. Uh, uh, experience where they're going to be exposed, you know. Do you know? Do you know where I heard? You know, I heard one buffet that's thriving for real is uh, the buffet outside of uh, the Tesla uh, Corporation, the one that's right around the corner. Mm. Musk's buffet, yeah. <laughs> Musk's Elon Musk's go to buffet, still doing great. <laughs> a lot of traffic there right now. If you have a question or comment about the world of chain wrestling, you can email us at dopewayspodcast at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 830-GODO. That's 830-463-6844. And to get the Doughboys Double, our weekly bonus episode, join the Golden or Platinum Plate Club at patreon.com 
slash Doughboys. Jason Mansukas, thank you so much for lending so much of your valuable time to us to be on our dumb show. So funny. What a great time. What a great time, guys. Thank you. The, honestly, I've been, you know, I've been listening for a long time and this last two months trapped at home. Like, I am so grateful that you guys are continuing to do shows, that you're getting great people. The shows have been hilarious. You know, like it's a, we need stuff right now that makes us laugh and feel like we're hanging out with the people that we like. And this show is definitely one of those shows for me. I'm always delighted you know, whether it's a double or whether it's a regular episode to hear you guys digging in on all of the business. So thank you guys for, and Emma as well, for continuing to do this because it really is, it's one of my favorite podcasts. I'm so grateful you guys continue to have me on. So thank you. And Mitch fucking, I goddamn dare you to, I will up it. <laughs> I will up, I will up my price to $15,000. if wow. you can, If you can wow. crack... If you can get below the top 50, 10, and, 10, wow. 10K still stands for the top 100. But if you can get in within 50, I'll add another five. And wow. I will say, since Jason is adding, is going up to 15K, I will lower mine from 10 to 5K. <laughs> It'll be the same amount of money. And I'm going to still That's put bullshit. it out there. I'm still going to put it out there. There's a lot of Doughboys listeners who have money to put up for this. Let's make, let's really put the pressure on Mitch by ponying <laughs> up money. Let's uh, hashtag I dare you, Mitch, followed by a price tag. And let's start, <laughs> let's start a list and let's get a, an actual tally on. I'm looking at you, Hodgman. I'm looking at you, Paul. <laughs> Sheer. I'm looking at you, Doughboys. Yeah, like uh, Evan Susser. Hey, hey, Commissioner, pony up the money, buddy. Wow. I don't care that you've got a baby to feed. <laughs> really, if you have any disposable income right now, there's no more worthy cause than <laughs> yeah, they're, trying to they're ante up to get Mitch it. on the Billboard 100. Is, is this not the time to be just throwing away cash on nonsense bets? <laughs> Poor, poor Susser's baby already has to deal with with her dad in the household. Trying to... <laughs> Commis commissioner of the household. <laughs> uh, Jason, you were you were too nice to us, uh, and uh, we wanted to thank you not just for for what the very kind thing you you said just now, but also you were always uh, mentioning us on other shows and and mm -hmm. interviews, and that's that's very very nice of you to do. You don't have to do that. You're better than this show, but uh, thank you very much for doing that. I shouldn't I, I shouldn't let her out. I was going to say something too, but I think the air fryer just came. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> wow. Breaking make, shoes. Make those fries. Make them right now. Uh, as Mitch is interacting with this uh, this postal worker, do you have okay, anything you would Mitch, like to, to plug? <laughs> okay, let me talk about this. Mitch yeah. just went, opened the door, got something, didn't put on gloves, <laughs> touched a box, immediately yeah. touched his earphones. Immediate, like Mitch has done everything wrong within five seconds. Shook, shook hands with the postman who was not into it. French kissed the postman. <laughs> I, have, now, I have this. Now he's Purelling. You got to wash. I, Go wash your hands, Mitch, you maniac. I, the guy I, so, just put that box down. The, 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 issue, the issue is is that packages get stolen in my neighborhood. For real. Hold on. Oh, I get it. Oh, I believe that. I don't blame you for getting the package, but I'm, I'm like in a full body sweat that you are now touching the package to your shirt. You're like, this is too much, too much contact. <laughs> it's very, it's very anxiety inducing to watch that whole thing go down. It's so interesting now, like watching TV or watching stuff and seeing people interact intimately and having yeah. e visceral, immediate visceral reactions to it. Like they shouldn't be shaking hands or they should, you know, like it's already gotten so in my mind to avoid contact that it affects how I watch stuff now. It really is like, I was watching Deadwood and Deadwood has like hundreds of extras packing the streets. And I'm like, you couldn't do this now. You couldn't yeah. fill a shot with a hundred extras and horses and people walking around in the mud. It'd be ne never, never. Man, it is. If you hear the sink, that's me washing my hands. Good. I want. That's what I want to hear. So Mitch is. I don't know if this mic is picking that up, but we're hearing him through his his AirPods. Uh, Zooks, any plugs? I mean, uh, we're continuing to do How Did This Get Made, which is the uh, Bad Movies podcast that I host with Hilarious show. Paul Shear and June Diane Raphael. 
Uh, we're putting, we're still putting out episodes that we recorded on our tour last year, and then we're also doing new episodes similar to how we're doing this tonight or today uh, over Zoom that we are putting out as well. We've done, oh, we did like you guys did. We did Bloodshot um the vin diesel bloodshot right yeah yeah the vin shot, diesel yeah. one that got released and we just did cool world oh wow the brad pitt animated uh uh weird crazy movie very horny movie very so horny shit. Movie. horny super horny a uh, super horny movie um but but very confusing um so <laughs> we're still doing that uh that's you know and then and then various i mentioned you guys on another fa- fantastic one of my favorite podcasts called binge mode so i'll give them a plug on this podcast which is uh, a pop cult uh, I, I, it's not exactly a pop culture podcast they usually do deep dives into they did multiple seasons of their show on game of thrones they did one whole year on harry potter they've just finished an entire oh, okay. year of star wars where they watched all of the movies, did all of the TV shows, and they talk very in depth about them. And now they're doing a weekly show where they're doing different different things uh, uh, that they choose. They're doing the comic book series Saga right now. Um, they're great. It's from The Ringer. Um, I'll, uh, I'll plug them. Our pal Jason Concepcion, one of the hosts of that show. Exactly. He was on, he was on our Shake Shack episode. Oh, that's right. You, yes. And Mallory yeah. Rubin is the other uh, co-host. They're both uh, fantastic hilarious, incredibly intelligent hosts and are, uh, it's the same. I just, it's a, it's a conversation. I'm always happy to be listening to just like you guys. It's such a well-prepped show. I was just like, man, I can't I just like, it's so they, they really do their own mm, like ours. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Both of us prep well for the show. I, I was going to say, I, I got a Kasari air fryer. It was the air fryer. I was so excited. Wow. I was so excited that I grabbed it, but you scared me and rightfully so. Because I get so scared about the cats. Because I bring a package in and the cats immediately try to sniff it. Yeah, and, uh, and, and cats, and cats can, can, get can get it. Yeah, cats can get it, and it's very scary to me. So, I think that's valid. You should be. You should be worried. Yeah. Um, I want to say. Well, one thing I want to say too is that I got some Gold Belly uh, Cape Cod Cafe pizzas because I miss bar pizza so much, and I and I figured since I'm stuck in on one of my cheat day Sundays, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna cook up some Cape Cod Cafe pizzas. And I knew that you would, you know, of, and Nick, you've never really had bar pizza before. No. So, um, but um, I want to say thank you, uh, Zooks. You're, you're, you're so funny. And, uh, and, and really, truly the only fault I, I can think of with you is that you dabble in our podcast in any way at all. And, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're such a, you're, 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 you're uh, the, 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 the f- I was going to say the first man of comedy, but that sounds like you're married to the the head of comedy, um, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm I'm like I'm like, it, it, but you mean it in the Damien Chazelle movie, The First Man? Yes, uh, yes. like as if I'm the first man who's gone into space. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but uh, well, we love you, and we and, and thank you for the those kind words because you're, you're so funny. And also, I th- I think John Wick three came out before uh, in between we when we did this podcast, and you were great in that too. I was so excited. Oh, thanks, to, man. To see. Amazing. You Amazing. ruled. Yeah. The best, That's awesome. the best. Uh, it's like, uh, and I say this, even though I'm in the movie, which I find very distracting, those movies, <laughs> the, the, the reason I'm in that movie is I, quite honestly, because I was such a vocal fan of those movies on podcasts. They rule. That they reached out and were like, we've heard you talk about this. We've got a small part. Do you want to come do it? And I was like, Fuck yes. That's fucking awesome. So like the there is something that's why I you know, like that's why I like talking about you guys out in the world or binge mode or Harry Potter or any of the things that I'm I'm a fan of things and I like you know, promote as as are we all, you know, uh, fans of all these things. You guys are fans of you've built this podcast around that and things that you are always talking about within here, within Doughboys, talking about pop culture or video games or whatever, all your stuff. It's fun. I like it because it scratches my itch. I'm a fan of things, and I like listening to people who are also fans of things. It's a very right. fun. Uh, it's a that that's what I like to be sharing or processing, especially right now when I'm spending so much of my time alone, it's nice to be engaged in even passively those conver- those fan conversations about about the things we love, you know, or the things we are we have complicated feelings about, a la uh, the Star Wars, you know, uh, what's <laughs> what's happened, what's happened with the Star Wars, which I will happily come on a double and discuss. <laughs> oh man, I wow. would. 
I would really love that. But, that's, uh, but that's... I, did, I will say I did just finish watching all of Clone Wars and all of Rebels, and they're fantastic. I've heard that. I've, I've watched. I've watched some of Clone Wars, and I enjoyed it. I, 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 I do, Rebels. I do, uh, I... Rebels to me is like what when I because I'm I'm 47, so I watched like the original movies pretty much when they came out. You know, with the exception of the first one, right? Right. Yeah. I was a little too young for that, but but the, so it was my Star Wars. You know, four, five, and six were my movies. Um, they were everything to me, and and they never lived up to that promise. Everything after Empire is yeah. dimi diminishing returns, as far as I'm concerned. Rebels is fulfills the promise of what those movies what i hoped those movies would have become wow, Re wow rebels is that rebels is i mean it's it's very obviously a riff on the the same kinds of characters except that it's a much better uh it's like adventure of the week it is serialized kind of fun and then there's a macro narrative that comes in eventually but it's just fun star wars adventures and it's great Wow, you just gave me something to watch. That's for sure. I'm going to be watching some of those tonight. Oh, and there's tons of them. That's the other thing. During quarantine, like I've been watching stuff that like I never got around to, like all of Detroiters or all of oh, Ships Creek. Show. You know, stuff that is like really fun, funny, comforting that I don't have to like focus too much on while I'm just like anxiously waiting this thing out in my house. Like it's nice to, <laughs> it's fun to get lost in those fantasy worlds or those comedy worlds or whatever. Well, we're a fan of, we're a fan of you and, and, and we appreciate you being here. You're the best. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jason. Anytime yeah, guys. Thank you. And Hey, that'll do it for this episode of Doughboys. Until next time for the Spoonman, Mike Mitchell, I'm Nick Weiger. Happy eating. See ya. On the next Doughboys Double, we open back up the feed bag with the ghost of Yusong Lu and Emma Erdbrink. She's alive. Give it a listen and sign up at patreon.com slash doughboys. We get deep into those questions. Do it. Sources for this week's intro are in the episode description. That was a HeadGum Podcast. <laughs>